All right, so so what we have, uh, Scott is playing Drang. Drang Angu. He's a hobgoblin cleric of Bane. But he's not just any hobgoblin cleric of Bane. All of you guys know Drang. And all of you guys know that, um, one, the black hand is not to be messed with. Um, and at the same time, everyone, especially the warriors of the clan, are very, very annoyed by Drang because he's constantly evangelizing. Constantly talking about the glory of Bane and through Bane and anything is possible. You know, you're going to really have to capture that essence. Right. Okay. And then we have Muck Brownsock, who is a notorious ladies' man in the camp. He oftentimes is caught where he shouldn't be and having to uh -oh, bail out of situations. Less his pants, if you will. Um, then we have Slurg Softhead, the giant orc. He's six foot eight, six foot nine. Um, pretty completely oblivious to most situations, but uh, no one really wants to mess with him because of his enormous size. That that said, it doesn't necessarily mean that things don't vanish behind his back. And. Um, whether you want to share that or not is a cue. Uh, we have Bilge Shortstock. Now, Shortstock is not his true surname. It is something that he's been called over the years. He's a very uh, diminutive bugbear. Typical bugbear is about seven feet tall. Poor Bilge is only five foot eight. And, um, <laughs> and takes hell for it. And then lastly, we have Nobby the Cobalt. Now, Nabi um, kind of floats around the clan, oblivious to most situations. Um, <clears throat> he, he has absolutely no long-term memory. So as he goes through situations and goes through meeting people and so forth, he typically forgets them within a few moments. And each time he experiences something, it's as though he's experienced it completely anew. So... His, and being an overly curious kobold, you might think um, he should have gotten killed by some angry orc a long time ago. The only problem is, is that Slurg over here has a, an affection for little things. He keeps mice as pets, and uh, he's kind of adopted Nobby. Although Nobby has no idea who Slurg is, because he can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Nob okay. Nob the first. Nob, yes, Nob Nob the first. <laughs> Squaw, the, uh, the, he affectionately names his mice pets Squab Squab, but he only can count to three. So even though he's on Squab Squab the 37th, it's still Squab Squab the 3rd, because he can only count to three. Um, so he's got these little mice that the other orc warriors tend to steal away from him when he's not paying attention. However, that's not nice. However, that's Nob Nob the first over here is, uh, person's mouse. has not yet been taken. It's an orc village. There's plenty of mice around. So here, on the on the cover of the mod, this is what it's going to read. Kind of the introduction to the module. War Chief Grog Bloodloaf has sounded the horn of war. Elf scum have stolen orc lands and the tasty havling herds. For generations, the Maggot Smasher clan has watched and waited from the icy caves of the frozen mountains, but that wait is over. War Chief Bloodloaf needs only the totem of leadership. The crown, the dragon crown of Dirge Maggot Smasher, to unite the clans and be, begin his war. Five misfits have answered the call to brave the, ca the caves of Thralarat and return with the crown. With a little luck, these five maggots will kill a few of the beasts within Thralarat before dying, making it much easier for real warriors to complete the task. So that's going to be your intro. So you guys, there's no expectation that you, any of you are going to live through this. Um, <clears throat> so, the first chapter of the mod is you're going to be completely box texted, um, and then we'll push on into chapter three, which is uh, which is going to be the actual road, and well, actually there's going to be a party first, and then the road to Thralarat. Which is your ancestral home. That's what the elves drove you out of. So, 
Let's see if I can read this without fumbling over my words. My lord, he is back again, mutters a tall, lean orc, overdressed in woolly decorated robes and a crooked conical hat denoting his possession as a self-important bootlicker. Stirring in a fur-covered throne, creaking under its, under its load, an obese orc scowls and grunts at the words. Leaning closer, the orc clears his throat. <clears throat> My lord. Recoiling, the fat orc shoves the bootlicker away with a smack to the face, sending him reeling to the cave floor. Ah! Omagi, your air smells like a rotten Odiog's bug. Scrambling to the foot of the throne, clutching his crumpled hat, Omagi kneels to grovel. My lord Bloodloaf, we mustn't keep him waiting. He... Having heard enough, Bloodloaf snatches Omagi by the neck and begins to squeeze the breath from the flailing orc. The bitter cold of the ice cave reveals the rage building in the fat orc as steam rises from his bald cranium. Amid the gagging and gurgling, Grog Bloodloaf glares about the cavern at the orcs who look on. I've heard enough gnarly words from that mouthy hobgoblin. I says we put a pig pole in his gullet and slow roast him. Orc warriors huddled around fires, erupted cheers and roars of excitement at the mention of a hot meal. Slobbering at the thought of roasted meat, Grog releases his grip on the gasping Omagi. Amongst the haughty laughter and taunts of the orcs, Omagi slowly staggers to his feet. Ugh, my lord, he is a priest of the Black Hand. If we kill him, the clan will flooze Bane's favor. The words tumble out like a cripple crawling down a gravel road. Grog turns his head and grumbles. I brings him in, but sitting up in his throat, Grog's eyes widen as a devious grin twists across his face. First, find me four maggots and haul them in, and make sure they they all misfit low lifes. Moggy bows deeply and shambles off. A short time later, Omagi returns with the misfits, entering for first. A tiny cobalt spins in circles, grabbing, grabbing at his own tail, seemingly just having realized that it's there. Close behind, a goblin scans the chamber and struts toward a group of Grog's wives who are lounging on a pile of furs. Slowly entering, a gigantic orc looks nervously about the cavern while gently whispering to something he cradles in his hands. Lastly, a stunted bugbear barges in and angrily shoves past the orc. Out of the way, lummox! Omagi bows to Grog Bloodloaf. My lord, here are the maggots, uh, uh, warriors you summoned. Grog holds back his laughter as he surveys the scum. Perfect! I'm ready! Bing drang in. Summon that hobgoblin! Moments later... A deep, haughty voice can be heard. It's unwise to keep the Black Hand waiting. Bane tells us that it is the doom of those who turn their back to the power he offers. There is no one but Bane, and through ba the Black Hand, his will be done. Grog rolls his eyes as Drang evangelizes. The hobgoblin waves his arms, wildly shouting at the warriors in the cavern. Too concerned with his sermon, Drang fails to notice several orcs pointing and laughing at the tidy kobold who falls in step with the priest, mimicking his exaggerated movements. Fed up with the noise, Grog leaps to his feet, roars back, Stifle, Drang! <clears throat> Drang glares back. You would silence the word of Bane? <clears throat> Omagi nervously interjects. Uh, what L Lord Bloodloaf means to say is that the clan has a task that only one as mighty as yourself can complete. We have assembled some of our finest warriors to for you to lead. Grog plops heavily back into his seat. I'm tired of the cold. Elf scum made war on Maggot Smasher clan, driving us into the mountains to live in the snow and ice. Grog stands again and begins to roar, his voice echoing through the cavern like a stampede of buffalo. No more! Too long have we elf elf elfish war crimes gone unanswered. Vile elf scum won't rest till we be worm food. Omagi, Omagi excitedly nodding with agreement. 
Yes, my lord, a wicked cabal they are. Grog pauses and sits again. Drang, take these boys down to Thralleret. Find the dragon crown. Returns it to me. With the dragon crown, we can unite the clans and end this elfin war of elfin aggression. The Magus Smasher clan will see elves pay for stealing our lands and our haveling herds. Drang, flattered at the importance of the task, bows deeply. Bane will see it done. After Drang and company take their leave, Grog rests in his throne and chuckles. Ugh, good riddance. Omagi nervously tugs at his throat. My lord, do we even know if the crown is there? Cocking his head slightly, Grog's face beams with joy. I got no idea. The slugs that enter that those caves never come out. There you guys go. So, you guys go out into uh, Akul Votar, which is the... Um, and I forgot to print out the, the map, but I have it on my phone. So I'm going to pass it around for you guys. Akul Votar are the, the ice caves where you guys dwell currently. Um, they're far to the north in the mountains. And uh, they are a frozen, frozen, horrible place to live. All right, so you guys are all the way up here. Votar Akul is the name of your caves. And Thralarat is all the way south at the bottom of the mountain chain. I'll pass this around. Now, between here and there, the trail you have to take takes you past an elven wood. And the elves have an alliance with humans to patrol that road and keep it safe from orc brigands. Um, and if you look close, you may not have seen it, there is like a little path that's dotted line that leads all the way down to Thralarat. It's going to take you the entire day to march down there. Now, what you have to decide is if you want to go by day or by night. The only one of you guys that has daylight sensitivity is Nobby, but he doesn't seem to care. He doesn't seem to care about anything. Else. <laughs> um, but in any case, he doesn't remember the last day. That's right. <laughs> so word of your guys' quest spreads through the clan quickly. Uh, while your average maggot, your average orc or whatever, the, the scum of the of the clan has no idea of the dangers that await. Um, in Thralarat, the seasoned warriors of the clan all know full well, after having seen so many of their brothers go down there looking for the crown and never returning. Um, <clears throat> so, the night before you guys are scheduled to leave, they throw an enormous party for you. Really, it just, to you guys, obviously, it's a, it's a great honor, the, the honorarium of, of this triumphant quest that you're about to undertake. Drang, you know, you're excited because you could go around, um, you're, you've been told to go under this very important quest, you see it as an opportunity to spread more influence of Bane. You know, if the if the war chief Grog Bloodloaf sees me in this light, others must as well. Um, but that night there's going to be uh, a feast of many unknown burnt-to-a-crisp beasts, and probably a few humans and havelings, um, booze, but also there's going to be contests, arm wrestling, fist fighting, knife throwing, and drinking contests. So you'll have to decide if you guys want to partake in any of these things the night before you leave. Also in attendance will be Grog's uh, harem of wives, slovenly sweaty orc wenches. Um, the sweatier the better. The sweatier the better. That's right. With six breaths. Yes. <laughs> 52 triple D. Um, and most of the orcs begin celebrating early. It's, it doesn't take, you know, orcs don't need a, 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 big, a big reason to want to party. And so the booze and the grog and the rock gut whiskey, it's actually, you guys call it the screaming orc whiskey. Because uh, it sent more than one orc screaming at the mere taste. Um, but the entire clan turns out. 
hundreds of orcs and bugbears, kobolds, goblins. Uh, of course, the the, the kobolds kind of tend to keep to themselves. They keep away from the, the main clan because uh, there are quite often contests of kobold throwing that are also that also occur. Um, there are no gnomes to throw, so now there's kobolds. That's right. So, <clears throat> Bloodloaf, by that evening, as the party is finally getting underway, and everyone's feasting and drinking, uh, <clears throat> some of the warriors come up to Bilge. Bilge! Here I always thought you, you would come up short on courage. But I had no idea you were also short on brains. No, it was just compressed. Oh! I, <laughs> more massive this way. Well, I'm sure you'll come back triumphant with the crown. And we'll be able to take it to those those elf scum. And you hear orcs all around laughing and cheering. Uh, <clears throat> Grog's wives begin to coo and call. And they coo and call much like this. <laughs> Ugh! Mock! Come over here! What's up? How are you doing it? And, you know, they, they look quite like, you know, the, the obese dancer from Jabba's Palace. You know? <laughs> yes. There's more to be done. And Muck kind of disappears in the, in the sweaty mess that is the... 12 or 13 wives that, that are kind of pouring out, out of their clothing and all over the uh, <sighs> I'm in heaven. you're in heaven so are you going to do anything while you're in there or are you just going to kind of let them poke and prod at you and giggle and as orcs do ha 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 orc women I'll uh Yeah, so let's uh, start trying to make some moves here. All right, so make a sleight of hand check. <laughs> Eighteen. All right, so you pop a bra, and suddenly, suddenly you are literally, it's like you got hit by a, a tidal wave of just orc fat that's been unleashed. Well, that's one. How many of them are there? There's about twelve. Well, there are three. So Muck's over there consorting with Grog's wives. Grog, in the meantime, is just plowing the whiskey. Um, <clears throat> he's talking to Omad. He's talking to a few of his personal warriors and doing his best to to not make eye contact with Drang, who I'm sure is going from warrior to warrior. Uh, I keep looking over at uh, Bloodloaf and trying to get his attention. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach Bloodloaf. Okay, he comes. You you come over and he's he's got his mug of ale and he's kind of looking away, pretending you're not there. Uh, Lord Bloodloaf. Uh. I ask that to honor Bane and the Black Hand, you uh, send tribute along with us. Tri tribute? Uh, you wouldn't want to make Bane, Bane angry, would you? What kind of tribute do you want? <clears throat> well, we'll need supplies. Gold. Gold? Where are you going to spend gold in the, in the caverns? The gold's not for me. The gold is for the glory of Bane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You come back with the crown, and you get tons of gold. All right. Uh, let's see. How far am I away from them? Can I hear them? Uh, no, you you are you are under piles of orcish meat, and can't hear much of anything. You're in muck heaven. Oh, for gold, gold, or gold. Your spear huh? cap, gold. Oh. Among the boobs and the butts. <laughs> you suddenly feel a large hand slap you on the back. Slurg! What? 
Surely, surely you know that this is folly, says an orc. <clears throat> and make a make a perception test. What is that perception? Negative. <laughs> no, actually it was pretty good. Oh. Perception so ten. Ten. Well, he rolled a seven, so you notice his hand trying to slide in the little pouch that you keep squab squab. Okay, so I punch him. Alright. <laughs> 17 and uh, uh, it's just your strength when it's hand, right? No, if you get your proficiency bonus, you get to punch him. Oh, so that's, uh, let's see, that's 22 then. All right, so you sock him in the mouth. And he's like, whoa, what? And it's, D, it's a D3 damage plus your strength bonus. And he says, whoa, I wasn't trying to get fresh, I promise. Okay, so that's uh, five altogether. Okay, so he's got a bloodied lip, <laughs> and some of the other orcs, he kind of starts stumbling back towards a group of orcs who are all laughing at him, and, um, meantime, meantime, um, oh, back over at Grog, he says, uh, so, you think you can do this, right? Bring back the crown. Anything's possible with the power of, uh, with the power of Bane. And I know you're sending it with only the, the strongest of our warriors. These are the best. The four best I could find. They'll serve the Black Hand well. Have you... Perhaps you should look at converting them before you go. Uh... Yes. Gather them up and... I... Uh, I'm sure... I'm sure there are those in the clan who would also convert... Should you succeed. I'll see to it. Make a perception test. Uh, three. Okay. So you guys are standing <laughs> back and seeing this conversation. You see Omagi standing right behind Drang, and he's going, ah, you know, like, build him up, you know. In the meantime, some bugbears come up to you. They say, listen, Bilge, what do you think, what do you say about a, a knife-throwing contest? Yeah, I'm always up for it up. So they, they haul in an elf who's badly beaten and battered, and put him up against a wall and they put a clay jug on his head. And they're like, they hand you some knives and you're up first. So what are we aiming at? <laughs> well, the, the jug first. Uh, we'll get the elf later. That works. Maybe it's the elf first. <laughs> What'd you get? <laughs> Two. Plus, uh, what you get? It's thrown weapon, so... So it would be, what, a seven? Yeah, max. <laughs> okay, sure. so the, the blade goes wide, and one of the other hobgob or one of the other bugbears goes... Uh, I didn't want to, no. <laughs> one of the other bugbears comes up, shoves you out of the way. It's like, this is how you do it. Oh, crap. <laughs> so, he rolls a natural one and buries the dagger right into the elf's head and drops like a... Pile. You just told me no. Oh, hey, I... <laughs> Apparently this was getting old. <laughs> Patience is not very long. Well, I, I think that uh, Drang is calling for you anyway. And Omagi comes over and he says, Gentlemen, I think you're the leader of your company wishes to have a word with you. <laughs> All right. Yes, man. you too. And he gra grabs <laughs> you by the scruff. And I'm not done yet. <laughs> Can they even find me? They don't find you, no. <laughs> Although, suddenly, as you guys come up, you guys come up. Grog leaps to his feet, and you see him looking over at his wives, who are, are now in various states of undress. You don't see Muck under there, but Grog looks very, very interested in what's going on. <laughs> what do you do? Uh... I only count three warriors. I was told I'd have four. One of wow. them is Muck Brown Sock. Grog the says. And the cobalt would make four together. <laughs> <laughs> well, Muck, one of them is Muck Brown Sock, he says, without looking at you, and he's just staring over at his wives who seem to be giggling at something and throwing their undergarments around. 
Uh, hmm. I want to chase one down and bring it back. No, you're going to go get <laughs> The Cobalt goes and grabs a bra, and he's standing there. It's taller than he is. And it's all, there's probably 10 pounds of sweat choked in it. <laughs> uh, it's very fresh. begins to move towards the women and wives. Pulls out of his large axe. I don't see nobody coming. I'm buried. No, you're buried. I'm busy. Uh, I'm going to try and force my, force my way through and grab muck. Grab him out of the... Out of the mess. Out of the herd. <laughs> All right, so you run over and make a make a uh, grapple check. Uh, so you're gonna try to pull one of these large women off. Three. Okay. <laughs> so you're like pushing around, and Grog's like, "Hands off my wives!" And Omagi's like, "Sir, sir, uh, we must not uh, we must not harm our our champions." And Grog looks back at you and looks back at his wives, who are all like kind of wide eyed now that they know he's watching. And they're kind of shoving Muck back behind them. But eventually, Grog kind of wanders away back towards his throne, grabs some bottles, marks a screaming orc, and begins to drink. And the night goes on much like this, where there's just. Contest of arms wrestling, rest and fist fights, and while uh, there's confusion, I'm going to steal one of the wise panties. Okay. I have I have a plan for it, but we. Okay, so you've got orc panties. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Big enough for an elephant. Big enough for an elephant. All right. But the night goes on much like this. It doesn't sound like any of you guys really want to partake in in much of the uh, uh, the spirits. At least none of you have volunteered to. But uh, although the cobalt may have grabbed a drink, taken it, realized there's a cigarette butt in it, you know, <laughs> chewed it. Careful cigarette butt. Yes. So do you guys want to do anything? Do you guys want to partake in any of these things before you uh, prepare yourselves to leave? I'm right where I want to be unless there's some pickpocketing that you're doing. Well, some of the wives have kind of shuttled you away. Well, if, if there's some arm wrestling going on, I'm gonna go another round. I go with them. Okay. Do you want what kind of what race of creature do you want to challenge? Oh, an orc. You want to challenge an orc? I'll take that challenge. You two want to arm wrestle? It's athletics checks, opposed athletics checks. You're just a big goblin. Oh well, I think, <laughs> I think that works. Okay, there go. <laughs> so he slams <laughs> Bilge's arm down, and. A number of the of the bugbears begin laughing at Bilge. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I forgot to use my good arm. <laughs> <laughs> I want a rematch on that. All right. Nope. Seventeen. That's still not my good arm. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let's go. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, well, Omagi comes up to you towards the end of the night. He's arranged to have provisions provided for you. It's mostly things like hunks of dried meat, reasonably clean water, um, and uh, extra blankets for the road. Um tells you that the road between here and Thralarash is fraught with danger. It will be a 10-hour hike to the to the cave entrance. Prepare yourselves. Many warriors have gone in and none have returned. Remember, you are fighting for our ancestral home. And it is up to you to see the glory of the Maggot Smasher clan return. Of course, he's talking to you four. He has no idea where Muck is. What? Um, so you guys are provided dry meat um, you guys are given like I said wa water skins 
with brown water and not yellow water. So this is good. Good stuff. Yeah, this is good stuff. Um, Sporting bread, that kind of thing. And he also gives you many bundles of dry wood for fire to cook with, if you wish. Which is which is dried wood in the north is like it's like better than gold. This is quite an honor to have wood. <clears throat> and he gave us a lot there on three pieces of wood. Yes. Yes. So, do you have anything you guys want to do? Any questions you want to ask? Or are you guys ready to hit the road the next day? I come crawling right. out of the... You'll come, you'll come, you'll show up just before everyone leaves. Okay. I mean, if nobody Before ever came back so. from there, there's not much we can ask about the location of the ruins. Well, remember, this was once the home of the, of the clan, so much is known about it already. Why is it not anymore? Because the elves have driven it, us yeah. out. All right. Was it our home in our lifetimes, or would that be... It was 30 ancient? years earlier. So not in your lifetime, but probably in the lifetime of a few of the older orcs in the camp. So I'm going to try to find out, find one of those orcs and find out if there's any traps or anything, especially dangerous. Okay. That could okay. hurt. Uh, so what does Slurg, what does Slurg Softhead ask this, this aged orc? <laughs> I didn't quite get that far yet. <laughs> <laughs> so Slurg goes and finds some old orc and he's like, I forgot what I was going to say. Do they have any mice? <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, Thralarat is a dangerous place even when we lived there. There might there be many. some backup mice for the road. Well, you know, I've got uh, Squab Squab the third, but if he dies, be trouble. I'll need to find a mouse somewhere. Something small and furry. It doesn't have to be a mouse. Anymore. Could be anything small and furry. Or scaly. Or scaly? <laughs> Felix. Uh, well, this old orc, his name's Snograt, tells you, you know, when I was young, we fought many creatures in, in, within our own home. They're cave fishers that go hundreds of feet down cracks in the earth and open up into the underdark. Many creatures would come up and we would have to do battle to keep our home. It wasn't until the elves drove us out that we actually lost. And hearing him say many, when I go back to the other guys, I think he was saying many as in small, and I say, we got this guy, is everything in there is tiny. <laughs> <laughs> he thought many. It's miniature. So is there any uh, older older queens? That I might <laughs> well, most, most females die in childbirth at some point. But I'm sure there are some old crones you could track down. Let's see if there's any maps. Maps? Maps. Or if they know of any traps. Traps? Maps and traps. Only if the elves left them. Nobody has a map of this. Map? What's a map? I haven't learned my letters yet. Uh, is there any pictures? Pictures. Pictures of the Well, cave. it's a big cave. What do, you, what do you need a picture for? Okay, so I'm good. Let's go back to getting freaky frisky. <laughs> <laughs> so Muck rejoins the group. He's kind of like hopping, putting his socks on, putting his shoes on. <laughs> Sorry. It's my mom. Um... So without further ado, you guys begin the 10-hour hike south. Um, you And it, it's a pretty... The hike there is actually relatively easy because you're descending an elevation the whole way. You are literally walking downhill the whole time. So it's not a, a terrible hike south. Um, the, uh, the lowlands where the forests are, it's actually fairly temperate. Um, the only reason that where you live is, is so cold is because 
uh, because of the elevation. Um, sorry, they're trying to get me to go out and eat with them. Yeah, how long do you think the session is going to run tonight? Uh, as long as you guys want to go. Okay. I have to. I'm working remotely all week, so I just wake up and log on. I'm I'm working, so I don't care if I have to stay up late. Get rid of my parents. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll pull out some woodlands as you guys are moving south. <laughs> Go ahead and, uh. As soon as we get in the trees, I pull a sapling or a large branch off and I put the antlers on it and carry it over the cobalt as an umbrella to keep the. Uh, the sun off of it. <laughs> I don't know what you guys want your marching order to be here. Uh, I'll be sure to jog them first. Okay. That's kind of scout because he's a smaller target. Well, Drang, Drang pushes his way out front. You got Slurg behind the co the cobalt holding a branch over him so that the sun doesn't hurt his eyes. And Bilge is in the center there. Smell. Uh, I feel, I feel it was the, the cleanest pair I could find. I think they were washed last year. So roll a D4. Yeah. Three. Did you get three? Okay. So you guys are hiking along, and everyone gets to make a perception test. Four, five, thirteen. Nice Fifteen. About turned up in the corner. Fifteen. Okay, so over here, well, the first thing all of you notice is the heavy smell of patchouli. It's just straw, overpowering, and, and really stinky. Let's be Elvis foot. And you look over, and you see this woman. She's got dreadlocks. She's clearly an elf of some kind. Um... Her robes look like they're made out of moss and vines, and there are literally dozens of squirrels all around her, and <clears throat> she definitely notices you guys. She looks over at you guys, and her eyes kind of get big, and all of the squirrels just kind of like sit up straight and look right at you. So, do I see the squirrels with my tent? Yeah. Okay, I run over and try to grab a squirrel. <laughs> so Slurg begins to run over there, and she immediately screams, Feel furry fury! And all the squirrels swarm at Slurg. <laughs> so we'll use these as our squirrel swarms. We'll roll initiative. All right. It's so, uh, initiative. Should be towards the top there. Um, I think it's on the top. Should be what your, your dex mod. Okay. Did I not leave it on there? I mean, I did. That's something I might need to add. One thing for the list. Gotta put some stuff on here. Right? Of course, I might have just. It's, a, it's just dex modifiers. So. All right. Ooh. So we've got Nobby. What'd you get? Ten. Nobby's a ten. Um, Bilge. Six. Six. I, I rolled six or seven times so far. I don't think I got higher than five. It's gonna be <laughs> one of those nights. You want another die? I like it. I got plenty. Mine was three. Three. Buck. Fourteen. Four. Four for Drang. I, mean, I can do two of them before I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and... The Druid. I got 67 sets in there. That's like... Yes. Yeah. There's a 19. Alright. <coughs> <clears throat> 
So first, the Squirrel Swarm comes running at uh, Slurg. Slurg, I need you to make a DC 12 Wisdom Saving Throw. I hit 12. My wisdom is 1. So. Okay. So you recognize the threat of them coming. If you had failed, you would have been fawning over their cuteness and lost your next action. <laughs> but the, the, the squirrel swarm swarms slurred. And they're going to make an attack. A 9. They miss. They seemed, they seemed to be swarming his groin and biting at his groin. Making their nutcracker attack. <laughs> <laughs> and Drang, another swarm of squirrels, attacks you. But they're just biting you. Ooh, a crit. Oh, that's going to hurt. Drang <laughs> <laughs> oh squirrels. God. 16 points of damage oh, from a no. swarm of squirrels. But that was a crit. <clears throat> uh, and then the druid. See, small things can be dangerous, too. <laughs> she, she casts a spell, and her skin looks like it has taken on a barky appearance. A rough barky appearance. She'll move to behind the tree. All right. Muck, you're up. Uh... I'm going to move, uh, what's 30 feet? My, uh, uh, not my nuts. <laughs> hey, baby, you need me to load, rub some lotion on that skin? You're looking a little dry. <laughs> a little crusty. Uh, I'm just going to hang out right there for this turn. Okay. <laughs> Um, so Nobby is up. Play a little game of let's put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> what say you, Nobby? And that's another thing. You guys have never heard Nobby say a single word that you've ever understood. <laughs> So the, the, those those furry things are swarming. Slurry, huh? Yeah. Are you gonna burning hands in? <gasps> Oh. oh well. Uh, what do you want to do? You need to magic missile them. You're gonna magic missile the the swarm of. All right. Squirrel swarm. Two and one. Alright. Wow. Seven. Seven damage to the first. And two. Two damage to the other. Alright. Build. He's jumping up and down. Uh, I'm going to try and save our friend Drang from this storm of squirrels. Try and stomp some. <laughs> You start whacking them and hit Drang instead. Hey, hit something. Yeah, I changed the dice. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I have seven damage. Seven damage. All right. Um, Drang. You can't attack them if you want because they're just hopping all over you and okay. biting and snapping and snarling at you. All right. Uh, As squirrels do. More like, rather than snarling, probably chittering. First, I'm going to use Healing Word as a bonus action. Um, 
plus. What's my spell casting? It'll be your proficiency bonus, or your, or it's just you add your wisdom modifier to that. Wisdom? Okay. Yeah. But your spell casting ability is going to be um, your proficiency plus your wisdom modifier. Okay, and proficiency... It's plus two. Plus two. Uh, so... So healing word is proficiency and wisdom? Or just wisdom? The healing word is just wisdom. Just wisdom. Okay. Um, so, plus five. And then... Uh, I'll use my... Long sword and attack the swarm. Let's start. Gonna zombie. start swinging and. Uh, twelve. A twelve hits. All right. Nine. Nine damage. So with one swipe, you kill about ten, <laughs> ten squirrels. <laughs> ten squirrel heads go go flying. There's still plenty of squirrels left, though. All right, Slurg. So I realize that they're not uh, going to be my pets, so I'm going to go ahead and Not your friends. Them. Yeah. <laughs> they're not my friends. With my uh, great axe, I uh, get an 11. 11 misses. Oh. Dang. <laughs> you missed a squirrel. How does that feel? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like this <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the top, then. Um... Let's see. I'm going to go uh, Nutcracker again, but this time on, uh -oh. on Drang. I hit. So you hear a loud crunch, and oh. Drang goes, oh, and drops to his knees. You're going to lose your next action. You take no damage, but you lose your next action. Okay. <laughs> and then they attack you. Twelve. Nope. All right, the Druid. Um... She's putting lotion on. Um, she's going to cast a spell, and her club begins to kind of glow and shimmer. All right. Muck. Uh, I'll close with the druid. Uh, hey, baby, it doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> uh, 13... Uh... So at the bottom, there's a grid with your attack sheet at the very bottom there. Uh, 18. That'll hit. 1d6 plus 3. 6. All right. Ah! She squeaks. All right. Uh, Nobby. Hmm. Firebolt and squirrels. Which one? Which bundle? The one slurred. On my, the one on my umbrella, sir. <laughs> okay. And it's a 12. 12 hits. Ow. Right. You've thinned the herd quite a bit. There's still a few squirrels Did hopping around. And... Oh, they, all day. <laughs> we were outside for quite a portion of the day, actually. I grab one of the flaming ones that like, starts running by and pound it out <laughs> and stuff it in. Stuff it in your bag? Yeah. All right. So after Nobby goes, it's Bilch. Run. Trying to stall. Whatever is left. 24. Ouch. Now it's happening. How much? Ten. Ten. All right. Drang, you've lost your next turn. Bane, you are... Why have you forsaken me? Bane, Bane my balls hurt. Slurg. Um, I'm going to 
I'm gonna take my <coughs> javelin and try to steer them on shishka bombs. Okay. Oh, so I get a three doing that, and that's an eight. So I miss with that too. <laughs> You're just flailing about. I'm your friend. <laughs> All right, so we're back at the top. Uh, let's do the squirrels first. Drang, there's not many. Well, there's about half a number of squirrels left on him. A one misses. You've you've startled the the, the swarm by your by your prayers. And slurred. Ooh, I got you. But it's only half damage because they're below half. Two points of damage. All right, the druid is going to clobber muck. No. Oh, I got you. Wow, she likes to play rough. She does. That's a problem with the DM creation. Cinnamon! Cinnamon! Hits everybody. <laughs> Three points of damage to muck. Okay. And when she swings... That smell of patchouli kind of wafts into you and burns the eyes a little bit. Oh, you smell so clean. Stop. <laughs> All right, Muck, you're up. Uh, All right, I'm going to tell her again. Hey, baby, we don't have to play like this. This can go a lot nicer. Oh, five. Uh, I'm sure that misses. Yeah, ten. All right, uh, Nobby. Efficiency bonus is only what plus two. Two to grab. What's that? Firebolt. Oh, so Nobby starts shooting in the sky. All right, Bilge. Uh, all right, Dragon, you got that. Certainly, my elf. I. Uh, what are I people in my elf? Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, they're swarming drain. Now you're gonna attack the ones on slurred. Oh yes, sir. Another hit. Swinging well. Again. So, Bilge comes over, and when one big boot, he stomps out the last of the squirrels. That's how you do it! <laughs> I just hang my boat. It's easier to aim when you're closer to the ground. Alright, so all the, the, this bunch of squirrels has been eradicated. And we are at Drang. Alright. So you get back up. One hand over your cup. Uh, I'm going to attack with my longsword again. All right. Time to invest in a cop piece. Uh, <laughs> nine. Nine misses. Five. Yeah. Well, uh, we're in traps. It doesn't. It is not. That's less traps were a bad idea today. All right. I should heal again or wait. Yeah, I'm gonna guess heal on the right on the Alright. Uh plus six. So after Drang, we have Slurred. Okay, so I'm going to attack the Druid. Obviously, my heart is going to be attacking the small animals. Yes, it's not. So you're going to move up to the Druid? Yeah. Now, there's a big tree trunk here. You can move up to here, if you wish. Um, or you can kind of come out around. She'll have a little bit of cover if you don't. Well, then I'll bring come up to the ground. Yeah, okay. Well, 18, so that's 23. That'll hit. Hey, don't kill my babe. Nine. Nine damage. Don't kill her. 
All right. Uh, so we're back at the top. She is going to... Mm, kill her small furry friends. She's going to attack Muck again. And hit. For three points of damage. And then the squirrels. A hit. One point of damage. All right. Take that. Vicious squirrel. Yes, the squirrel swarm. All right, uh, Buck. So now you have an ally in base, which means you can sneak attack. All right. All right, baby. You can give up now. We can make this fun. <laughs> <coughs> we can do this the hard way. Or the hard way. Either way, I win. Go. Oh. No. <laughs> All right. So you start dirty talking her, and she gives you a slap across the face. Fresh! That's how I like it, baby. <laughs> Nobby? Who else? I don't know how you get Fireball would look great on this world. Ooh. A 13? You hit. So there's a bunch of flaming squirrels that are darting around your body now. There's only a couple left, though. Okay. Um... Uh, <clears throat> And after Nobby, it's Bilge. All right. I'm going to surround her so she can't escape. Ah! Take a whack at her. Eight misses. And Drang. All right. Long sword again. Uh, Eleven. That misses. <laughs> You're distracted by all the flaming squirrels. <laughs> Slurg. Um, so I'm going to try to hit her again. And get oh, 10. That'll miss as well. Wow. You guys are on a roll. <laughs> um, squirrels. Hit. Wait. Is it seven, yeah, 17 will hit you, right? Uh, 18. Oh, crap. Well, I missed that. All right. See you. Um, so she's in a lot of trouble. She's going to disengage. Begin running. Hey, baby, don't leave us. <laughs> okay. Don't My squirrels! Muck, your turn. Uh, close with her. Okay. Go get her, booger. <laughs> Uh, oh, I got a 19. You hit. And that's a D6 plus 3. 9. Ow. Well, do I... I uh, no, she's not engaged, so I... Right. The... She's running. All right, after that, it's uh, Nobby. I heard her screaming and running, and I thought that was the thing to do, so I started running that way. <laughs> oh, you and hit. fire bolter for four. And she face plants. Is she still conscious? No. Is she still alive? <laughs> we'll have to check that out. Is that a perception? Well, it's a, it's a medicine check when it's your turn. Um... And it's Bilge's turn. I'm going to go have a closer look. Make sure she's not trying to fool us. Okay. Um, so you want to do a medicine check, or you just want to give her a, a, a double tap? I'm just going to poke her with my boot and see if she's conscious. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. You're going to kick her? <laughs> hey. All right, you walk over and kick her and... You do D3 plus your strength damage. You're giving her a full oh, move. Oh, a gentle kick. Oh, a gentle kick. Four, one, so four. Yeah. So you do four damage to her? Well, she's unconscious. Don't damage the goods. 
Uh, Drang, you still have squirrels all over you. Uh, yeah. I'm going to throw the longsword again. Ten. Uh, ah, get off, get off! Do I have any, like... Do you, you need got... another die? <laughs> do I have any, like, disadvantage to my, on the floor. to my movement? No. All right, I'm going to run 30 feet that way towards everybody else. Are they already on this? I think she got set like that. I don't know. Found him today. All right, so Drang just starts running. The squirrels are chasing after him, of course. Or they will here in a moment. What few are left, that is. Um, so Slurg. Still some squirrels left. Yeah, I think I'll go try to hit the squirrels again. And okay, hit them. <laughs> oh, please, let's be friends. Oh, that's a 19. <laughs> okay. And a 12. Oh. So, so, so Slur gets a good running start, leaps into the air, and comes down square on the, the remaining squirrels, killing them. <clears throat> All right. So we'll fall out of initiative. And they've got this druid lying there. She got a big boot print right on the side of her face. She's got dreads. And she's got dreads. Goblet stick scars. Huh? Is she blonde? No. No. Well, she may have been blonde at one time, but she's dirty. She's a dirty girl. All right. <laughs> Cut one of the dreads off. Okay. So start twisting it. All right. So you take a long dread and. Swing in the ground. You got, you got a squirrel in one hand. You got a, you can make a squirrel nunchuck with the dread. I'll find another one. It's still on fire. Fire. Hey, that's my girl. I. Uh, I'm gonna okay, search. She's got no other weapons oh. on her or something. Just I'm gonna search her. Away. Well, she's got. I'm um, gonna break the club on my knee. What's the? Okay. <laughs> Do I need to roll? No. Search she's it. got a a potion of healing on her. And she's got a small vial of the stinky perfume that she wears. Oh, to remember her by. <laughs> yeah, she does bleed out since you guys didn't intervene. She took a beating from the. But is she still warm? Her body's warm, yes. Guys, look away. No, if that puts her on fire, she would be warm. <laughs> Look away, guys. Look away. Okay. So you you have defeated the squirrel swarm and the druid, the patchouli stink druid. Would that smell be common to the elves? The scent? Yeah. No. It's uh, not. The well, the, the tree huggers, yeah. Is there anything where she was standing, like, in the ring of, ring of squirrels? Like, any totems or... Nope. Nope. Okay. No. She was just there frolicking with her little furry friends. Her her animal companions. The squirrel swarm. Alright. So, pushing on. And you guys never really said if you were traveling by day or night. So I assumed it was by day because you partied all night. Well, yeah, that's why I was yeah. carrying the yeah. umbrella and two things. Okay. Who took the potion of healing, by the way? Uh, Mux got the potion maybe. of healing. Searched her. We should bring that vial of perfume. Who wants I the patchouli that, oil? I took that too. I remember her vial. Okay, well, you got patchouli oil then. <laughs> Nobody else said they were searching her. But she did not have any cash or anything on her, but she's a druid, so she doesn't have much use for that sort of thing. All right. Um, I was going to ask, do uh, orcs eat elves, right? Yeah. <laughs> they don't eat anything with meat, made out of meat. Yeah, so I'm going to ask everybody if we really want to leave this behind. <laughs> you guys want some of this? Or I can always bring her along in case we have you know, a snack. I was just thinking, you know, take the, and the munchies big down. steak out yeah. of the side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get the choice cuts is what you're telling me. Yeah. All right. Does she have any religious icons? for? No, Judaism? she's a nature worshiper. Unless you count the the dra the the braided armpit hairs. Okay. 
All right, so um, you guys begin pushing on, and that was only a few hours into your trek. Um, you had just reached the, the edge of the wood, and you encountered this beautiful woman by muck standards. Um, <clears throat> I would say she was beautiful. She just presented herself an opportunity. I wouldn't say your standards are very high either. She, she <laughs> had what you look for in a woman. What, 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 what are standards? <laughs> If his standards are too high, he's not going to reach him. He's just so short. <laughs> There's no standards. Uh, I don't remember how you guys were marching. Something like, towards the front. Like this. Drang wanted to be out front. Mostly alive when we were doing creepy. Yeah. Um, it's just um, got to be warm. What else we can do? Kind of change the map up a little bit. And the, the next thing I'm going to run at you guys. Throwing in the solids. Gonna throw some trees in the mix to to cover up a few things so that looks a little different for you. Here, Byron, put that out there somewhere. Hey, I remember that tree. Don't go near the tree. There's a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it a couple of memories of that tree. No, actually, that's, that's the girl I'm flirting with at the, in the Sunday game. <laughs> Right. Good enough. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so you guys are marching along, and um, make perception tests. Nine. Thirteen. Twelve. Three. Seventeen. All right. So up ahead, what we're going to do is we're going to call the printed trees that are two dimensional. They're going to be large bushes. And so you, again, you're following the trail south, and there's you're kind of at the edge of the woods, so there's kind of sparse trees before you get to the dense wood. And But you notice that this tree right here, this big tree, is full of owls. Owls of all different kinds, and they're all wide-eyed and staring at you. It's really bizarre. It's during the day. You never yeah, see anything like it. Like it. And uh, um, they're all seem to be hooting. Woohoo! <laughs> And um, and it's almost as if they're hooting in a kind of a a pattern, and it's and it's rotating through the tree. All these different kinds of owls are staring at you, all shapes and sizes and colors, all just kind of staring at you. Um, are there any? Markings on the tree. Is there anything special about the tree other than? Do you want to go over and look at the tree? Yeah. All right. So Drang starts to to hike over the tree, and then you hear a deep hoot. Uh. And this bush right next to the tree begins to rustle wildly. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna take a few steps back from the bush. All right. And that's when this guy bursts out of the bushes. A giant owl bear. Hmm. And all the owls kind of look down at you. Oh, snack. Uh, and then he, he looks at you and he says, Hoot? I say, Hoot. Who? Hoot. <laughs> Hoot. Hoot. He's growling at you. He's, he takes another step closer to you. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna motion for the rest of my party to uh, step up with me. Okay, what do you guys do? You guys I'm just gonna start freaking me out. Run forward. Finally, good fight more than just some squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you begin to run forward. We'll just roll initiative then. Twenty-one. All right, Nobby, what do you got? Twenty-one. Dang it. All right, twenty-one. Bilge. Fourteen. Slurg. Eight. Muck. Twenty-one. What's your dex? My dexterity's plus three. All right, roll off you two. Roll the four. D twenty. Six. So Muck's first. 
Drain. Uh, 13. Monster got a 7. So, <clears throat> Muck, you are first. You see, you see, uh, Bilge, he just goes, finally, something to fight! And he starts running up with his sword. Uh... We should fight this. Of course okay. you should. I'm already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the nature? It's not a bear. Owlbears. Bilge is a buck bear. Owlbears, you have no idea what that is. You just know that it looks like a giant owl with claws. He's running the clothes with it. Yeah, he's got a sword out. He's like, finally! Uh, does it understand common? I don't know. It understands hoots from Drang. Uh, does Drang understand Drang's hoots? <laughs> what to do? I'll yell hoot. Muck goes. Okay. Uh, so after Muck, it's Nobby. Well, Bilge is charging. Bear looks at you and says, Hoot? Drang. Uh, can I cast Sacred Flame? Alright. A nine on his saving throw. Okay. Which means he failed. Slurg. Am I close enough to close an attack? Yep. It's a good straight line. You can go right up between everyone. And if they get in the way, I just knock them down when I'm coming through. All right. You plow past. Uh, 17. You hit. And nine. All right. It's the owl bear. <clears throat> the owl bear. It's whacked by Slurk's axe, and it retaliates, first with a claw, crap, a 10, and then a beak, tries to bite you, a natural 20. That does it, for sure. That's going to stay. Minimum damage, 7. <laughs> I don't know how that's a critical, but it is. Take some of that. <laughs> and it's growling and snapping and snarling and flailing. All the owls in the tree are flapping their wings and hooting and crapping all over the place. I see it when I see it hit him. Uh huh. I freak out and uh, acid fly. So Jack said. Okay. Acid splash. So what am I? Doing? Eleven. Take six. Okay. Are really effective. 
All right. So, Muck. I'm going to go around the side away from the tree so I don't get the cool on me. All right. So no, no self-respecting goblin would run around with the owl poo on me. That's right. And now I get my uh, sneak attack, right? If you hit, yeah. If I hit. Seven plus five. Twelve. Missed. Crap. Crap, he yells. Bilge. I'm going to take a second swing now that I've got my bear rings on the beast. 13. You hit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Nine. Okay. Bilge wax it. Drang. Uh, I'm going to do Sacred Flame again. All right. A five. All right. Uh, five. Cantrips away. Uh, slurg. Wow, back to me already? Right? Yeah. Okay, so another swing. We don't have 12 people at the table when we do Wednesday <laughs> nights. There's like, Wednesday nights we have like 40 players now, 50 players. There's over like five tables? Or There's four tables. There's enough. From, with, we need one more DM. Continual walk-ins. Yeah, there's enough just like, five. I don't like know what people... What, four weeks in a row we had new walk-ins? Yeah. yeah. And last week, I guess, they turned away three people. Wow. Because there just wasn't. Eric had what, eight? Yeah, we had nine. We had nine. I had seven. Jeez. And and then there's Aaron's table. And I had a guy that didn't show up. I had I had nine, and we had Aaron three people that didn't show up. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really needs another kick. <laughs> yeah, kick those X-wing people out. There's only like three of them. <laughs> All right, who just went? I didn't. I got eleven total, so I missed. All right, the monster. Um, he's going after Slurg again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, he's going after Slurg. He knows that he's just blind with rage. Uh, a 19 with his claw. That definitely hits. That's a big attack. That's 2d8. 13 points. Ooh, I am hurt. You know, and I'm still standing. Yeah, that's, that's what's important. But he's going to try to bite you now. And he won't bite you. Good, because I couldn't have taken it. <laughs> All right, Nobby. Deck save. Deck save. A three. A one. All right. Are you raging? Muck. I'm not yet. So. Muck. Twelve. Plus two, fourteen. What is he, plus five? Yeah. He's plus oh, five to hit. 17. Yeah, he hit. Right. Jeez, Nika. Just Knocking just... over everything over there for a ball. Plus, uh, a ball. What was it? 1d6 for one of 12 down here. Where'd he go? I just saw it. Hit. Should be in bold sneak attack. Yeah, plus 1d6. All right, all right. Now we're talking. Four. Uh, seven. Okay. So you stick them in the ribs with your uh, with your dagger or whatever you're using. My short sword. All right, bilge. Uh, another swing. Oh, not twenty. Oh shit. <laughs> Thirteen. Oh. All right, the the owl bear collapses with the the stroke from bilge's attack. And uh, all of the owls just begin to flood out of the tree. There's about to be 50 of them as they fly away. Can I try to shoot one with an arrow? Yeah. Make a good uh, good dinner. Not to mention the giant we, we owl still, bear on the ground. We still got elf. Oh, no, we got the giant elf. Part, so. Never mind. We got the owl bear. We got the elf. You can take an owl if you want. You can shoot an owl, barn owl if you want. Sure. Owl stuffed owl bear is pretty good. I no, I can't. So he cool. sends an arrow just into the woods. You're ow <laughs> nearby. <laughs> All right, pushing on. Well, so we're gonna try to get some claws from the owl bear, oh. make a necklace or something. All right, so you cut all the claws off the owl bear. Is there uh, is any treasure around? Came out of the bush. Is there anything in the bush? Um, there's nothing really in there, except a lot of dead mice. 
I'm gonna carve the mark of dead and the mark of bane on the tree. <laughs> okay. The owls were presenting the owl bear with their offerings of mice. I'm, I'm I'm going to try to you know like sit there and cry and, and scoop up all the mice, you know, thinking I'm burying them. And, uh, okay. All three of them. The the all three of them. There's one, two, three, 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 three. three, 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 three. All right, all right. So pushing on, you guys move south now. In the module, there's a number of of uh, different wandering encounters. I don't want to see you guys burn up all your resources for fighting wandering encounters. But real quick, um, I just want to run through some ones we're not going to do right now. See what you guys think. Um, you come into a clearing in the woods, and you quickly spot a pair of elves. And a centaur meeting, comparing hair care products. The elves, both of them female, talk like an 80s valley girl. Oh, annoying. When they see you, they say, Ugh, they're so ugly. Another one, another of the, the other elf responds, I bet they smell. <clears throat> And of course, over the combat, every time you hit one of them, they'll yell, ah, my hair, or not in the face. That's where it's going later. So that's a, that's, that's another one of the encounters. Um, I just picked the first two for us actually to run. So there, whoop, that's the wrong guy. That's the, actually the, the, the fourth wandering encounter. There's the centaur. And uh, a couple of elves that you would have encountered. With their nice hair, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the other encounter I had in mind was this guy and his squire, and this one is the the. Well, that, the last encounter was called the Fashionistas. Um, this next one was called Chivalry is Not Dead. This is Sir Haggis Labeef and his squire Chauncey. Um, <clears throat> they're patrolling the trail for orcs. Sir Haggis wears brightly polished plate armor and an open-faced helmet with an oversized plume that flops about the top, protruding from his face. A handle mustache, neatly twisted and waxed, protrudes out the side of the helmet. Uh, as he see when he sees you, he screams, "Tally ho! Come, Chauncey, to battle!" And he charges you. And of course, Chauncey is on, on foot. He's a little squire and has to tr do his best to keep up. Um, so that was the other encounter, other wandering here, possible Tally encounter. Tally starts looking for the hill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where? Huh? Huh? Oh. So, oh, yeah. I, again, it takes about ten hours to make the entire trip down to Thralorat. Um and. You guys are really tired. I don't know if you guys want to do any healing as you arrive. Well, he's got healing spells. Yeah. yeah so there's probably no time to take a long rest before we go in. Well, we'll get there. Oh, we're not there yet. No, you've just arrived at the mouth of the cave. The cave, um, let's see. Hold on a second. The wife sent a Japanese photo. Oh, they're in the subway. They were in a subway the other day, and um, it was literally wall-to-wall -wall people. Like, they're in there like, like sardines. I've seen on TV that the uh, Japanese subways actually have people that are paid to cram people in the subway. Yeah, like push <laughs> just so the doors will shut. Um, <clears throat> the entrance to Thralarat... Let's see. The entrance to Thralarat is more tall than it is wide. I mean, the entrance is wide. Let's not, don't get me wrong. It's about 10 foot wide. But <clears throat> it comes up to a peak, and there's a large crack that runs up the side of the cliff that the entrance to the cave is. Um, and, the, and the entrance is about 30 feet tall. Um, about 30 years have passed since you guys had, or since the Maggot Smasher clan had been here. Um, let's see. The entrance to Thralarat is about 10 feet wide and looms 20 feet high. That, at its apex, has a tall crack running up the side of the mountain. Um, 
thickets and brambles grow in dense clumps about around the cave entrance and a cold air howls up from below so when you're standing you can hear this air howling and it is a chilled feeling peering in the cave slopes steeply down about 30 feet before you before you could take a step forward a thundering voice erupts nearby it's mine you fathead quickly another equally deep voice screams back fathead you got the fathead after a few moments of incoherent grumbling and art the arguing continues my idea my crown one voice booms angrily you ugly crown not fix that says the other with a laugh so you're standing at the cave entrance, and this arguing is going on off to the right of you. Okay, not inside. Yet. Not inside, no. I want to stealth up to see if I can see what's uh, what what's arguing. Okay, so he's gonna stealth up. What's Drang gonna do? Um, Fifteen. I'll I'll wait for Mark's report on who he sees over there. I got a fifteen stealth. Okay. Wrong man. <clears throat> so if the, the main entrance to the cave is about, like I said, 10 feet wide. And... Off to the side over here. Behind all the brambles and thickets. <clears throat> So this area here is just choked with these brambles and thickets. I heard crown, I want to check it out. <laughs> and right here, it looks like there's a large burned out patch. Make quick work of this. All right. So, Muck, you're coming over here. You try to stealth. The rest of you guys are kind of over here. The ground in this area is kind of deeply impacted. There's really nothing growing on the trail that leads to the entrance, but on like like I said, on the sides, it's just all thickets and brambles. Um, you look it's over... Alright. Okay. Um, Alright. A six. The arguing continues. He doesn't seem to notice you. Um, but you see another cave, and, there's a, and it's evening now by the time you reach the cave. Uh, reach thraller at, and you can see there's a glow coming from the cave. Yes. Let me try to scoop closer. All right. So make another stealth. Sixteen, twenty-one. All right. Are you going to? Oh sure. Quiet. Nine. Quiet four. I'm quiet. The natural one. All right. So you look in and you see a cave. <clears throat> kind of right in the middle here. There's a big bonfire, and on a on a not I wouldn't say a spit, but just a pole that's leaning against the fire. There is looks like a stag or an elk or something, and arguing in here. You see this bed. and he's arguing with himself about who gets the crown. Can I see the crown? What they're talking about? You don't see it now. All right, I'm stealth away. And go back to the party. The other, so they can watch me defeat it. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to the others. Okay. 
stay here and take the rest away. Alright, don't do anything stupid. Another goblin. Yes. Seven, uh, twelve. Still hold some away. Alright. You hear one of the voices say, Whoa! Who's there? And the Etten climbs to its feet and look, peers out and sees you two standing there. <sighs> Be quiet, you kept telling me. <laughs> <laughs> one of them says, one of the head sounds says, We kill these maggots, then get my crown. The other head retorts, Your crown, my crown. And we need to roll initiative right here. Oh, I actually rolled good. Oh, so did I good. Dobby? 22. 22. Bilge? 9. 9. Slurg? 21. 21. Muck? 14. Uh, Drang? 11. 11. 15 for the app. Alright. <clears throat> so first up is Nobby. And you hear you can hear this booming voice coming from over here, screaming, Kill the maggots. Scott, there's drinks over there if you want any. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. And from there, you can see this enormous Etten, two heads. Start barking and yipping and waving back at the other two. All right. Slurred? I'm going to dash over there with my, with the, I'm not the first. Okay. 30, 60. Okay. I'm going to take one of my javelins out. Alright, so you pull out a javelin. Alright, the et. So he dashes to there. And, of course, they continue arguing. Be my crown! No, not your crown! My crown! <clears throat> And after that, we've got Muck. Uh, I'm going to back up. Are you going to disengage? Or? Oh, no, I'm going to engage. That's me. Is that SOS? Yes. I can't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, uh, 5396. So I can't disengage. Well, you can disengage. Remember, you're a, you're a rogue, so you can do your cunning action. You can attack and then disengage with a cunning action. So, is he within reach? Do I get my? I don't get the. There's no sneak attack because he's not. Uh, we're already in fight mode. A short sword. Okay. Fourteen. Hit. Eight. Five. All right. And then I'm going to cunning action and run away. Okay, how far do you want to run? You can run up to 30 feet. 15. Just uh, back to those guys. That's 15 right there. You want to go 30? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, Drang. Uh, all right, I'm going to... Dash up the slurry. Alright. There you go. Dashed. 
And Bilge. Alright. Bleeds of Ken die. <laughs> Felix. Uh, 12. No one up there, no. 12 hits. Nine. All right, Nobby, you're up again. Uh, I'm gonna fireball him. I won't break. So Nobby sees the scorched earth off to the left and <laughs> tries to add to it. All right. After Nobby, we have Slurg. So I'm going to move out to, to where I can throw uh, javelin. And, uh, yeah. You want to go 30 feet up? No, I want to stay with Nobby. Here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 85 is 13. You hit. Oh, for four. Okay. Next. After Slurg, we have the monster. All right, so the monster <clears throat> yells out, "You won't take up my crown!" And the other head looks at the uh, looks at him and goes, "Your crown? It's my crown, my idea." Thirty. And rather than attacking you, the one head headbutts the other, and they begin yelling at one another. <laughs> and it is. <coughs> Muck's turn, and he's away. So Muck delays. Drang. All right. Oh, there he is. Muck, you're up. All right. I'm going to shoot my bow. Shoot your bow. 17. You hit. You can sneak attack too. Ooh, hey. Yeah. Seven, ten. Okay. All right. After muck, it's drank. Yeah. All right. Uh, where is thirty feet? Thirty feet. Yeah. Ten, twenty, thirty. Okay. Uh. I'll cast Sacred Flame. All right. Natural 20. He goes, whoo <laughs> and avoids your Sacred Flame. Okay. Uh, Bilge. I'm going to sort of go with the Beast, trying to get it from the back. All right. Ah, sorry. The Beast. So you move around behind it. Too quick for that thing. Uh -oh. oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Natural 1. And after Bilge, it's Nobby again. Oh, oh yeah. And so I run up there. I don't realize, I, I came to realize how large this is, if this close enough. And so I will drop and start groveling. <laughs> so uh, that's my action is to grovel. Oh. So until the end of next turn, your allies gain advantage on attack rolls against an enemy within ten, ten feet of you that sees you groveling. Okay. Nice. Is there any saving throw for that? No. All right. So the so it sees you groveling, and it it seems partially confused and partially flattered. So. Muck or uh, Nobby begins to grovel, and it's Slurg's turn. Okay, when I see Nobby hit the ground, I'm not really kind of paying attention, so I think they've done something really nasty to him. So I just uh, run in there and just take a big old swing. <laughs> For 11? 11 misses. Yeah, oh, you have advantage, too, because he's oh, groveling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so that makes it uh, 16. That hit. There you go. Four or five. Okay. All right. After slurg. And I yell, "Leave Nob, 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 Nob alone!" <laughs> Nob, Nob, the first. The monster. Uh, well, let me see what he does. 
I gotta roll my chart. I'm not throwing you, Felix. Fruit One of the heads says, fine, fine, let's just kill them. And the other says, Arr! and he swings his club at Bilge. Ooh, I hit, I think. Yeah, that's a 22. Yeah, that does it. Yeah. So, 2d8 plus 5. For 15, you get connected Ooh. by. And then he swings his morning star at Slurg. And he hits you. Oh, for 20 points of damage. So I'm down. Ah! So Slurg drops with a morning star. And the Yetin the lets out a hearty laugh. And the other goes, What are you laughing at? And it's Muck's turn. Muck. He's still engaged, right? Yes. Uh, my short sword and bow do the short bow do the same damage, so I'll just stay back and keep chucking arrows. Okay. That's nah, gonna be a miss. You have advantage. You have advantage because of the groveling. What's the roll again? Yep. Then take the higher roll. Seven still miss. Seven plus what? Twelve or plus five is twelve. The hit. That's a hit. Yeah. Oh wow. He's just the broadside of a barn, you know. Uh, six. Okay. And so, Drang. All right. Um. So I can guess the only word on slur getting reviving, right? Or do I first have to stabilize him? No, you don't have to stabilize her. The act of healing will stabilize. The magical healing automatically stabilizes. All right, I'm gonna cast healing word on slur. Uh, three, uh, five. So you're at five, slur. And then uh, I'll cast sacred flame. All right. Twelve. Ah, oh, dang. That's my. Uh, all right, and then I'll move about thirty feet. Like here? Ah, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Bilge. All right. That one was just an oversized goblin. Try me on for size. <laughs> uh, Twenty-three. Or seven damage. I'm gonna use my action surge. Okay. 18. You hit. Or 7. And bonus action. I mean, a second to win. Or 5. Alright. Nobby. A little quick groveling. Because he killed my meat shield. And I will need a deck save, I believe. A deck save. Uh, a seven. Two points on the acid. It's flashing in his eyes. Two points. Did I hear a Wootini? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. Wootini! Slurg, you're conscious. Okay, so I'm going to get up and take another swing. Okay. I've lost the advantage because you're not grabbing, right? No. Well, that's okay. It's uh, 17. Okay. Yeah. Or 6. 6? All right. So the, the, the Etten finally says, All right, no more messing around. We kill these things and figure out who gets crowned. All right, first he's going to try to club you since you just got back up. And he clubbed you. I think you're going back down. 14. Yep. That yeah, sounds like a Wednesday night game. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to do that till tomorrow night. So he's going to have to go at Bilge. <coughs> Ooh. 
19 damage to build. Damn, can I go down too? Argh. All right, so two people have dropped, and Muck, it's up to you. All right. There's no one in base with him right now. Damn it. But I still get advantage, right? No, that groveling is over. Oh, shit. So it's at, at seeing two of your heaviest hitters go down, you get nervous and send an arrow wide. Damn it. That's not an arrow going. Drang, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to ask him if he preaches, if he prays to Bane. <laughs> Have you heard the teachings of Bane before? I could use someone like you. I'm uh, just curious, curious. What does the, the matter you do? Oh, it's like it's it's a it basically allows you to increase the volume of your voice to a booming volume. Okay. Well, I don't know if that'll be. It's kind of for show. Yeah. Uh. Like right. Gandalf so, says, "Conjurer of cheap tricks." And that's pretty much what it covers. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I need it's to a move, cheap trick. move up to attack. Right? Yeah. Are you out of heels? Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Big trouble. Uh, all right, so I got this. He's taking a lot of damage already. Uh, I'll attack with my long sword. Okay. Uh, thirteen. Hit. Uh, eight. Wow. Then okay. And a war priest. War priest. Again. Uh, can I do guided strike as a reaction and add? What time do I have to do that? Um, I think you can do guided strike anytime, can't you? Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a free action. Yeah. They use your bonus action to make your... Is that the plus 10? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you can do that whenever you want. Okay, yeah, you can. You gonna hit? Yeah, so it'd All be right. 16. You hit? We'll look it up and worry about it later, but go ahead and take your hit. Uh, 7. You can use a channel. Is it a reaction? That's good. We're good. All right, so you clobber him twice, and he's got wounds all over him. He's bloody badly, and he's kind of, he looks very nervous and very wide-eyed and very, he's gasping for air. Um... And it's Bilge's turn, so you need a death save. That's a good one. Yes. Nobby. Three magic. Oh, ow. And the Etten falls to both knees. And he falls forward. Right on top of Slurg. I don't notice it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've defeated the Etten. <sighs> Inside the cave, and I assume that you're going to do, like, Spare the Dying and all that good stuff. Um, inside the cave, you can see piles of animal bones and other refuse scattered haphazardly around the entrance and within the cave. Numerous cave paintings cover the walls that depict the Etten wearing the dragon crown. However, many are defaced, with one head being blotted out or scribbled over and the crown redrawn on the other head. By all indication, the Etten has been here for weeks, arguing with itself over who will get to wear the crown. But there's no crown in the cave. No. <laughs> Is there anything that would look good to, as a present to uh, orc or goblin maiden? Well, there's a big stag being roasted over the fire right now. Um, you, are you gonna, well, what are you guys gonna do? I assume, I assume within an hour you guys could would be up. You know, as if you took a short rest. I say we go ahead and camp here and eat the stag and uh, get yeah. all of your points back. And it definitely looks like this Etten's been here for a while, and if anything knows about this cave, it probably thinks there's an Etten inside. 
so it's a fairly secure area. So whoever stays up, act like you're arguing with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I read about the Yetin, that was one of the bigger changes to the Yetin, is that you never find them in pairs. Obviously, they're already a pair, but because they're already always fighting with one another, two Yetins together is complete chaos. Uh, so I was like, I gotta put that in. I've got to put that into the mod. Um, as you guys sit down to take a rest, you notice that the rope holding up the Itten's trousers um, is extremely fine. Well, when we found that on a search. It's on the Yetin. He's lying outside. Yeah. Of course, I would have searched there. So, treasure. It is actually a rope of climbing used to hold up his pants. Okay, so you guys are able to rest. Does any of our does anybody else notice? Well, when I was crawling out from under him, I noticed the rope looked really cool, but that's all my brain got to. <laughs> Ooh, great rope. Are we taking a short rest there? Are you going to take a short rest or a long rest? You've been marching all day long. Uh, well, I think we're all pretty, the night there. I think I we're all pretty beat up. Yeah, I need some All right. All right, that means... Okay, so a couple things happen every time you rest in this mod. is You get an experience award, and we have to roll on a chart. Um, so before we do the rest, let me just go ahead and do XP here real quick. So it's a... So it's built for advancement while you're... Yeah. 530 XP is the drop. So it's... Uh, that doesn't get anybody up. Okay. Probably not yet. Is that on top of like the 300? Yeah. Right. So you'll be 70 shy yet. Um, essentially, every time you guys take a long, long or a short rest, experience will drop, and we have to roll on this chart. So I'm going to have um, Lance go ahead and roll a d20. 10. Okay. Okay. okay, so Lance, uh, Muck sits down to rest, and you know you're getting your affairs in order. Everybody's kind of licking their wounds, making sure their gear's in order, and Muck, you have no recollection of this, but out of your backpack, you pull an orcish lady's bra size 52 double D, and you don't remember where you got it from, although you have a pretty good idea. Uh, I'm going to sit and sniff it and use it as my pillow. Okay. And find memories as I sleep. Alright. Well done. All right, so are you guys going to keep watch as you rest? Do you want to want to drink while I get up? Do you want to need anything to drink? Yeah, I'll take one. Yeah, I'll take one if you don't mind. Jeez, I got a tea and a water in there. Water. 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 There's also buy water. Anyone likes that? With the creepy commercials? Yeah. <laughs> I think you don't mind. Buyer, you want one? You pass that down. Yeah. You want to buy or soda? No, I drink enough buy today to slow the ship. You know, all I gotta do is drive Thank by you. it and rip open the case. And <laughs> Are you gonna do the three liter chug? Yeah. No. I still feel for the poor kid. All right. So, are you guys going to keep a watch? No, thanks. I uh, ate right before everyone showed up. I'll keep a watch. That's the sum of chips I am right now. Ooh, those do look good, though. Maybe later. Just try one. Well. I will. Oh, that's... I'll try one. I'll as well. Wow. Wow. I didn't do it. Distracted Nico with chips. That is pretty good. 
It's dangerously good. <laughs> what about Where'd you get those at? Uh, pretty much any Walmart is going to have now. <laughs> yeah, Pringles came out with the jerk chicken flavor. It was horrible. <laughs> The best, the best chips I ever ate were, were um, homemade chips down in New Orleans. They were a jerk. They were a jerk. Well, I'm and sure those were pretty, probably pretty good. Made in house. Yeah. They were spicy though. It was good. Oh, I like. I, was, I like spicy. I was trying to remember what's the name of the uh, taffy cart. The little three foot long down there. I mean those things they also sell pralines and stuff. Well, they sell that, but the, there's one guy that's got like the homemade taffy, and he sells it. It's like half an inch. I don't remember. Three feet. I don't remember. Basically, it's a giant Charleston chew without the without the wrapper. Without the, yeah. Okay, so who's gonna take the rope of climbing? Oh, did I find it searching the body here? Well, I mean, the belt. it's the belt of the. And I assume that. It's going to be used quite a lot later. For climbing. <laughs> For climbing. Be, all right. I searched the body. I'll take it. Okay. All right. So who's going to take first watch? I'll take first watch. All right. Roll a 20-sider. Two. Two. He's almost 20. Oh. I don't know if well, it would have been better or worse. <laughs> well, uh, your watch goes by fairly uneventfully as, as the night presses on. Um, of course, the biggest worry is elves coming by. But this Etten looks like it's been here a while. So if elves have been by, they probably didn't live to to see anything. So who's going to be on the second watch? I'll do it. 20? Four. It's all clear. Third? I'll take it. What? 12. All's well. Last watch before you guys. All right, eight hours of rest has gone by. Right. Yeah. Yay. And that's eight hours of rest net, right? So you actually had to rest a little longer than that because you have people shifting in and out, right? Um, okay. <clears throat> so everyone's healed. Everybody, uh, um, I guess I can erase this. I'm about to terraform. <laughs> oh, I just erased part of our initiative order. Oh, well. The nice part about actually playing this out for once is that there are little little things that I noticed that would flow well, like adding the patchouli stink to the hippie druid. That wasn't actually in the mod. I just thought of it and decided it's got to go in. Okay, so I assume that you guys go back to the cave entrance once you've rested a while. Um... Everyone make perception tests. 16. 16. 8. 12. 5. Um, Bilge, you notice as you guys are walking back to the cave, remember, it's like you've got the Etten's cave, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got the cave entrance to Thraller at Proper. And then you've got all this scrub land in between. Well, your eye catches another very narrow, small cave coming off to the behind to behind all the things. There seems to be another kind of egress there. Mark, Mark, you should go take a look. I'll go take a look. So you're gonna have to go through all the thickets and briar. Okay. How do you want to do that? Stealthily. No, I don't know. There's a... Uh... Nimbly. How about a acrobatics check? Okay. Well, how about... Well, 
how do you want to go through? You could try to like belly crawl under this stuff. You could go out around the edges and try to go between the the rock face and try to go between the rock face and the thicket. Okay. Just so you try to squeeze your way through. Um, make a dexterity save as you go through, trying to avoid the the thorny. Twenty three. Okay. Yeah. So you you are able to slip through fairly. I mean, Small you're a pretty battery. greasy guy. You know, you're pretty swarthy, greasy guy. So you're able to make your way through. And when you look down the cave, it's a narrow cave, maybe five feet at its widest, maybe three feet at its narrowest. Uh, and it kind of snakes its way back into the mountain. I'll go down a couple of feet. Um, I'm going to okay. check for traps as I go on. What is a... Uh, it's an investigation. Investigation. Six. You think it looks perfectly safe. Yeah. <clears throat> when you go in a few feet, you can see that it turns right. I'll go down to the corner and kind of peek around. Okay. And then it winds around and oh. turns left. Okay. I'll uh, go back out and let them know that there's a cave, another entrance, but I can't tell where it goes. Okay. Do I need to roll again? Um, no, you found a pretty safe way through. You don't need to. So, Bilge comes, s slips out. Or, sorry, not Bilge. Muck slips back out. And... Hey, there's another cave down there. Hmm. And again, this one slopes down dramatically. It's pretty steep. Um, but there's a lot of, like I said, the ground is impacted with a lot of rock and pebbles and so forth. So it wouldn't be very difficult terrain to traverse going down. Maybe the other cave is just a second entrance or something. How big is the entrance of the second? Uh, this one or this one? The one he went down. Uh, it's five feet wide. It oh, narrows. So, okay, so I, I could get through there. It yeah. Be... The narrowest is maybe three feet wide. Which one do we want to do now? What do you think now? He says the right one. Towards the small one. He likes small things. Anybody else have another opinion? Nope. Well, I think it's a good idea to go down that one. So you guys want to go down the little one, huh? All right. All right, it kind of winds ever so, narrowing, widening again. And it gets to a spot where it's a little bit wider. And is it going downwards or is it? It's, but it's much more gradual. Okay. Not like this where it's just an immediate drop where it's probably pretty close to a 45 degree drop yeah. and you descend about 30 feet down into a land to a landing um this one it's just gradual every step you take forward you're definitely going down but it's not crazy um <clears throat> everyone make perception tests you got me? 10, not me, 16. All right, you guys, a 10 would get, you could hear the sound of rushing water and trickling water ahead. Um, the, um, the cave is very cool and damp, and the air in here is, the further you go in, the heavier and clammier the air gets, and the air also has a very strong, musty odor. Is it chewy? No, it's just musky. Damn it. Um, and as you guys push on, the tunnel narrows again. What is your marching order through there? I'm probably up front, I think. I'd be right behind him. I'll be in the middle. Something like that. All right. So it, just as... Slur, who's last in line, clears this wider passage. Something happens. 
again, this is a bit wider, and then it narrows down to five feet wide. You couldn't see it. You couldn't see it from behind because it was hidden. But there is, as you guys pass through this area, as you guys pass through this area, up in the ceiling there's an actual shelf, a little alcove in the shelf in the ceiling, and a creature lunges out and attacks. If I can find my creature, there he is. Alright. Of course, he's actually up in the ceiling and he reaches down to get Slurg. So it's going to get an attack and then moral initiative. <clears throat> Alright. I'll give it just one attack, a tentacle attack. There we go. An 11. Nope. All right. So, Nobby. Roll initiative, fellers. I like that. Nobby, what do you got? Nine. Nine. Bilge. Four. Slurg. Nine. Nine. What's your dexterity? One. All right. So Nobby's first. Mock. Natural twenty. So oh, twenty-three. 20. Drang. Four. Four. All right. And the, this bizarre-looking worm-like monster has a ten. So first thing it does is it reaches out and tries to lunge and wrap its tentacles around Slurg, but it misses. So you hear Slurg give a Aah! And it's Muck's turn. Uh, can I... Right now it's like it's most of its body is kind of hanging down. Can I shoot an arrow from where I'm at? Like step to the side of the line? Yeah, you're small size. You could probably squeeze into this half square. Eleven, uh, sixteen. Hit. All right. And you'll get your sneak attack because there's a guy there. Eight, eleven. Okay. Um, bilge. All right. Rah! Yeah. So I kept keeping eyes on the front and the back at the same time. Uh, 22. You hit. Four, five damage. All right. It's the monster's turn. It's, it's got, it's much like a centipede. It's got numerous legs out its side, and it's using those legs to hold on to this, this alcove that it's hanging down out of. And its face is full of these tentacles. And it's got kind of a lamprey-like mouth behind all those tentacles. So it's going to try to attack again. And this time, there's two targets. Does it want to go after the big meaty one or after Bilge? It's still going after Slurg. 18. That does. All right, you need to make a constitution save because it's poison tentacles wrap its way around. Oh, I failed seven. Okay. You are poisoned, which means you're at disadvantage on your actions, and you take six points of damage. But you actually don't take any damage from the poison, it just makes you feel ill. Six points from the bite. And... Oh, wait, it's a paralyzation poison, so you are literally paralyzed. You take four points from the bite, and now that it's got you with its tentacles, it's going to try to bite you. Thirteen? No. All right. So you're basically limp in its in its face there, but you get to repeat your saving throw at the end of your next turn, which is Nobby's right now. 
marble. Ten. A ten misses. A one fireball. Alright. Slurg, make your save again. Oh, that's a natural one. Slurg is, is very, very, very much given into the idea of being warm food. <clears throat> Drang. Uh, I'll cast Sacred Flame. Alright. Natural 20. Okay. It holds, it holds the barbarian in the way. Muck. Let's kill this thing. And 19. You hit. So, 10. Okay. Anything else? You gotta stay where you're at? Yeah. Okay. Everybody else is kind of out of the way. Bilge? Uh, beast. All right, monster strength. How much does how much do you weigh? I think you're, that's on your character sheet there. Three oh five. Three oh five. All right, it's gonna try to pull you up into its little layer up there, but you're too heavy. So it's like struggling. So I'll I'll say it just absorbs its tentacle attack, trying to pull you up, but it can still try to fight. Uh, Eighteen. Yep. So bit you. For six damage. And Dobby. Thanks, got my buddy. Hmm. Alright. <clears throat> um Slurg, new saving throw. Saving the net. It's Constitution. Oh, Constitution. So 10. A 10. You're not rolling well tonight, are you? I am not. You're like, oh, take me away. I got back to back. It's gone. Drang? Uh, am I able to get with that? You have your actual sword? Um, or are they blocked? Uh, yeah, no, you can. Uh, it's up in the ceiling, so you can see the that Bilch has closed underneath it and stabbing up at it. Okay. So you can close and just get at its face. Alright. I'll attack with my one sword. Uh, net 20. Ooh, you critted it. So that's 2d8 plus whatever your strength bonus is. 2, 7, and it's just the plus one once. Right, whatever your, what, what's his strength? Uh, 13 plus one. Okay. So 10. 10. Yeah. All right. So Muck is up again. Pop another this thing. Nineteen. Hit. You want to surrender? No. Alright, so the whole creature goes limp. It's just slowly slides out and collapses on top of Slurg. Again? It's the second monster I've had on top of me tonight. Poor Slurg. Yeah. You could kill the carrion crawler. Hey guys, look me into the alcohol. <laughs> Just have Slurg throw you up. Yeah, eventually Slurg, you uh, regain consciousness, and you know, there's a big worm that looks like this on top of you. <laughs> Great. Although I kind of like the old sculpt. Where they had, they had kind of like eye stalks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That would be I think I like that better. So I need somebody to try and lift me up into the alcove. You have so little success with the orc woman, you have to resort to that. He's the one that goes for the orc woman. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just here to pet my mice. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep pointing at the rope. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame we don't have a rope of climbing right now. What?
<laughs> Rover what? what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Somebody look me up in an alcove so I can go check it out. So How high is the alcove? Right? I would lift him up there. It's a, it's maybe seven feet up. Oh yeah, so, I'm so somebody can just yeah. Okay. Do I find anything wrong up there? Uh, there's a number of bones up there. It looks like this creature's been here for a while, um, preying on whatever kind of comes in and out. Uh, make an investigation check if you look around. Oh, good. No. Investigation twelve. Twelve. That's not bad. Um, amongst the debris uh, up there, you find a silver dagger. No, guys, I didn't find anything up here. Um, it, it has obvious. Um, it's obviously of elvish make. It's not a plus anything. It's just a silver dagger. What's the dagger? Because it says I have two daggers, but it doesn't give it in the. Uh, dagger. Yeah, it's the same plus to hit as your short sword, but it's one d four plus your dexterity modifier and damage. All right, so you've defeated the carrion crawler. How much damage do you take from that thing? Um, I took fourteen. I'll leave. I was really hoping to be able, I was hoping one of the smaller characters would be in the back, because with a fourteen strength, lifting three hundred pounds up into the ceiling, which is going to be pretty tough. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to pull it off. If you'd have gotten one of you up there, that would have been bad. All right. So, you guys can hear water crashing up ahead. Kind of creep along. I'll uh, stealth ahead and uh, be checking for traps as we go along. All right. All right, let me read this to you, and I'll describe, and then I'll kind of draw it out a little bit there. The back half of this enormous chamber is flooded, fed by an underground stream that's coming down this passage. It's, you can barely make out the top of the stream, so it's completely flooded. The water's strong current pushes back past three enormous stalagmites that are in right here, creating several twists and eddies in the water. Um, and it drains down a whirlpool on the north end of the chamber. Uh, the ground in this chamber is sandy, covered in numerous small burrows from which tiny crabs move in and out. At the south end of the chamber, an assortment of mushrooms grow. A powerful stench wafts in from the northwest up here, um, carrying hints of body odor and diarrhea. Sounds like we're home. <laughs> so like we're home. you got three big stalagmites here that the water is kind of rushing in, rushing past, and then there's um, a whirlpool here that the water is draining down, and then over here there's like this big mushroom field, and it's in a, it's like three or four different distinct kinds of mushrooms from a distance that you can see. Um, and there's a little bit of rubble in the chamber. Not much. The, uh, um, again, the ground is, is sandy. Um, and it's rather damp in here. Does it walk? I'm going to come in and skirt the wall with the, uh, away from the mushrooms. Over here? Yeah. Okay. And... Cool. Check the water. Is it clear? Or... You want to go to the water's edge? I want to skirt the wall and come up. Like over here? Yes. Okay. Let's see kind of if the water's clear. Uh, the water is clean. It's very clear. It's it's, it's not even it. brown. It doesn't sound like it's good for drinking. No. no. <laughs> we only like brown water. Brown water blues. 
Let's see. If it's guys... not brown, do we really know that it is water? <laughs> what is this strange liquid? Let me dry that off better. Something like that pissed me off, man. <laughs> the evil elven cabal. Anybody knows anything about mushrooms? It's a nature check. Uh, I won't even try. Oh, maybe. Uh, no, ten. Oh, the mushrooms. Four. One. <laughs> Ask Bale. What is yeah. the all knowing Bale? Yeah. Say about the shrooms. True <laughs> bet. Tell us about the shrooms. Who got a roll? I got four. Four? Anyone else roll for mushrooms? Ten. Oh, I got a four. In case Bibbs ever came to Crazy Mushrooms before. Seventeen. You know all about mushrooms. There's not many shrooms all over the place. Slurg. Slurg. Go try the mushrooms. <laughs> See if they're any good. Slurg looks at you and goes, The vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Muck was kind of heading up this way. You guys were checking out the shrooms. Oh. And of course, it's dark in here, but you guys all have dark vision. Um, the first, well, we'll get to that. Um, the first mushroom that you notice is, um, they're along the water's edge, and some of them even growing kind of in the water. They're called water orbs, and they're edible, though flavorless. However, they act like sponges, and they can hold gallons of water, so they're kind of used to by underdark creatures to carry water. Um, protruding from the wall in shelves is, and it's growing in thick shelves, it's something called ripple bark. Um, and ripple bark, it's not very nutritious, but it's very flavorful, and creatures of the underdark eat it as like a dessert. And growing in three and four foot stalks is trilomac. And Trillamac is ground up to make breads of the Underdark. However, the one thing that stands out to you, Bilge, because, and there's only one of them, you see a small three-inch mushroom, and it shimmers a purplish color. Um, and you recognize it, recognize it right away as Silk Verosh. It's a rare, very rare, hallucinogenic mushroom said to unlock new levels of consciousness for those with a strong mental fortitude to handle the trip. That leaves me out. <laughs> Maybe you're, you're immune to that. <laughs> like, this mushroom does nothing. Uh, I'll plug that one. All right, you pull the silk verash out. Hey, get some others to Just flavor the fruit. Okay. Nobody eats that. All right, so you have a you have a one one use of silk verash then. Hey, get some of the flavor. But it is absolutely kind of uh, bioluminescent, <laughs> if you will. It kind of shimmers in the dark, a purple color. So we have mushrooms used to make bread. We've got uh, edible mushrooms, and you know we can make uh, mushroom. No, really snack high. on some of the tasty ones. All right, some of the. Some the uh, ripple, bark. Bark. Mushroom. ripple bark, and it's named. It's named because it actually has a color of rotted flesh. Hey, which is all right with you guys. Tender. So muck, um, you come around and you go to the water's edge up there. Why don't you move yourself up there? Yeah, that's kind of. And this way. jumping up out of the water, actually. Oh, great. Uh -oh. It's an enormous crab like creature. It's got two huge pinchers. Um, and a 
it tr it's going to try to attack you and try to grab you and pull you into the water. We all need you to get crabs sooner or later. <laughs> and of course, there's all the little crabs running around. He's had crabs so many times. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make it, let it get it's one attack off and then we'll roll initiative. <laughs> All right. 17. That hits. Ten points of damage. And it's grabbed you with its claw. And we'll roll initiative now. Um, Nobby? 18. Bilge? Yeah. Slurred? Nine. Muck? 20. Drang? 5. Uh, what did my 20 say? Oh, one right in front of you. Oh, duh. Monster has a 2, 3, 4, 3. Sorry, can't even talk. Well, doesn't matter, it's last. So, Muck, you're first. So, you're literally in its claw. You could try to escape yeah, so I'm gonna try or try to attack it. My nimble escape. It says you can you can take the disengage or hide action as a bonus action on each of my turns. Yeah, you still have to free yourself from its claw first. Okay, what do I, what do I need? Uh, dexterity? It's uh, acrobatics. Acrobatics, okay. Uh, 23. All right, so you use an action to break free of it. Now you want to do your nimble escape? Yes. All right, where are you going? Uh, towards my friends, the meat shields. 10, 20... 30. Help! Nobby? Help! See this big crab like creature. Help! It's a 19 to hit. You hit? Six. If I shoot it with fire. Help! Okay. Ooh. Bilge? It's my burning crab. Uh, make me so like a Saturday night dash. As far as I can. 10, 20, 30, 45, 50, 60. I moved up there. All right. Slurg? Um, I am going to. Attack, and I'm also going to use my uh, aggressive, so that will get me all the way up there to him on it. Yep. And 15? 15. It hits. Uh, so 10. Okay. Um... I guess it's drying. Um, all right, I'll move 30 feet towards the crab. Okay. And then I'll cast it in flame. 19. Yeah, okay. All right, now it's the monster's turn. It's gonna snap twice at Slurg with its crab, crab, crab claws. First attack. Is a 13? Nope. Second attack. Natural one. Not so good for the king crab. All right. Muck. All right. Now it's engaged. 17, 20, 22. You hit. 7, 10 damage. 10. Okay. And I'm going to move closer. Nobby? Deck save. Deck save? Here we go. 19. All right, up next is Bilge. 
my boots a bit. Steps out into the water. You hit it. Four, eight. All right. Slurg. <laughs> I'm guessing mine doesn't hit. No. Drang. Uh. You can close, or you can do your sacred flame again. Can I close and get on the other side of Slurg? Um, you'll have to go around him. So it's yeah. 15. Third, it's 30 directly to the left of Slurg. Here. Right there. That's 30. Okay. Um, I'll stay there and then cast sacred flame again. Uh, 15. Alright. Did you do it ten for the second diagonal? Huh? As far as yeah, the... yeah, it's ten okay. for the second. Um Monster. Alright. I was actually worried about this thing like tearing you guys up and drowning someone, but so far I haven't hit shit. <laughs> uh, let's see, I got two targets. Let's see if I can go after Slurg or Bilge. Be Slurg again. Poor You're just big, you know, you look yeah. tasty. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> uh, 13? Yep. Dang. Now I got you. All right. He See, hit when you. When you're too big, you just make a more appetizing target to them. I've learned that. 18 points, and he's got you in his claw. And that's it. Are you unconscious? Yep. So he's just limp in this thing's claw. Um, and... It will provoke from Bilge as it starts dragging Slurg into the water. All right, so move the crab back uh, 15 feet. Five, 10, 15, right there, and drag Slurg along with. There you go. So it's still sticking out of the water, uh, but it's definitely submerging. So, Mock. Uh, I'll close. Fifteen. Chuck another arrow. Twenty. Nine. Fourteen. Hit. Seven. Ten. Another ten. ten. Did you add your decks? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. I thought that three was a six. Shows how good my eyes are. Uh, Dobby. Um, but high pitch, but the gets passed out again. Uh, Thirteen points. Ouch! That, the the outer husk of this thing is is cracked in a number of places. The 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 crab looks like it's in very bad shape. Um, Bilge. Um, does the water look? How deep does the water look? Could I wait um, up there? I mean, you could take a step, and I could tell you if you look dangerously. Okay. So, like about here, you're probably waist deep in water. I was good enough. I can reach up in there. Yeah. I got long arms. You do. Yeah. Oh, oh no. No. All right, so you take your longsword and you just drive it into the, the head of this thing, and it kind of goes limp. I'm gonna grab the goblin, drag him back. You grab the goblin, <laughs> drag him up shore. And then I'm gonna cast Spirit the Dying. Okay. So Spirit the Dying just stay with us. Yes, you're just at zero. But you're no, you don't have to make any death saves. Is he? Is he conscious? Can I talk to him? He's unconscious. He's unconscious. Okay. What's a uh, medicine? Only magical healing or time will bring him back to consciousness. So Nobby is on top of him. <laughs> Stamp, stomping on him. <laughs> Cobalt CPR. Actually, you do. Is uh, is he back up here? 
Because he yeah, he's up on shore. Okay. All right. Here, we'll come over. Twenty thirty. Right, Nobby comes running over here while you guys are taking care of. Hey, um, what's? Uh, let's see another what's healing, healing potion? potion. What's healing potion do? No. Okay. What is that? One d four. Two d four plus two. Hey, don't tell anybody I did this for you. All right. Hey. Nobody sees us. Shh. <coughs> I can cut off half for the, uh, the the prime elf states. Mm -hmm. There's not really mm -hmm. slip on amongst the water orbs. You happen to notice that there is the hilt of a sword, but it's like stuck in the ground, so it's just kind of sticking up from the water orbs. All right, so you pull it out. You guys see Nobby with a sword that's much too big for him. It's a long sword. Mage hand. Dragging it. Mage hand holding the blade part. Did you have that on at all? It's been sticking out of the water for quite, looks like since the battle that drove the orcs out of here, but it's not tarnished at all. Um, it's so sharp. It's still sharp. It's a magical long sword. For the butter knife. Yeah. I treat you that shiny mushroom for a sword. I don't need mushrooms. Uh, the mushroom glowing. Huh? You got the mushroom waving around. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna take the sword away from him and give it to him? I, I distract him so uh, Nobby can sneak in and grab the mushroom. For a gold piece, I can get you the sword later on. <laughs> oh, it's alright. It does feel it's kind of small in our hand. He's probably going to get knocked out the game soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> alright. So, so Nobby tries to bite the mushroom out of your hand. Oh, you're a little bigger. You're going to let him bite it? <laughs> alright, make a wisdom saving throw then. Oh, great. <laughs> got one down and one insane. That's normal for him. I did a 12. Alright, so, so Nobby, first thing that you know, your perception goes up by four for three hours. But, you start having the worst trip ever. <laughs> you so everything around you seems to be looming in closer distorted faces the ceiling seems to Worst. melt and droop Worst. towards you best trip ever and you are also <laughs> frightened for those three hours you have a constant state of fright I can't be <laughs> for three hours so I go and stand right in front of this bugbear and go what did you do to Nob the Hump? <laughs> Nothing. He just bit the mushroom. And you let him have it? Well, once he bit it, it was his. <laughs> kind of give him it's kind of like where you go through the box of donuts and takes one bite out of each. So <laughs> yours now. So what you're saying is you go through the box of, some of the halflings and take a bite out of each. <laughs> so <laughs> Nob Dob takes a look at you and shrieks and tries to run from you. Okay, so I decided I need to catch him to save, to save him from himself. Okay. <laughs> so he's running from me and I'm chasing him. Okay. So a big, <coughs> monstrous orc is chasing you down the hall. Which way does Nobby go? All right. So make a, make a, a I guess it'd be just an attack. You're trying to grab him. So 15. So you basically lift him up by the shirt. He's still <laughs> and he's shrieking. Tie a rope around him. <coughs> he's shrieking and, and carrying on. He's absolutely terrified of you all. His his pupils are like this big, and he's just looking around. Everything is is freaking him out. And the fact that his perception is now so high 
only compounds the matter because he notices everything. No, earlier when I said don't eat the mushroom, that's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> the silk verash. So we're just going to, I guess, hold him and let him ride it out. <laughs> so do you guys want to stay in here for three hours, or what do you guys want to do? Well, I don't hmm. think I'd have a problem carrying him for the whole time if we want to. No, he weighs like 30 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So who's, honestly, who's taking the long sword then? Uh, I can't. Well, Do you want to keep the long sword? Nobody else no. Wants it, but... no. I'll let whoever wants it fight over it or decide between the themselves. All right. So you just stake it in the ground and let someone grab it? All right. Who grabs it? I'll grab it. Drang grabs it. I'm shocking grasp it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Drang, it's a plus one long sword. Plus one to attack and plus one to damage. damage yeah. Okay. All right. So, what are you guys going to do now? Did that thing kind of slink down into the water? It's just kind of like it's you know it wasn't all the way submerged. It's just kind of like the water. It's slowly being t pulled towards the the whirlpool. Can I get a claw off of it before it sink, sinks away? I mean, the claw is as big as you are, right? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was thinking some seafood for dinner. <laughs> that was that was the ball, Felix. <laughs> All right, so the, the smell, smell. Well, you guys are in this area. The smell is strongest in this area, probably from that passage. If you guys want to check that out. Going north. The, uh, yeah. and diarrhea. Yeah, the bo diarrhea smell. I want to go check it out. Stealth. <laughs> Stealth down. Nineteen stuff. It looks like they're up on top of like a mountain or something. I don't know what the heck's going on. I don't know what they're doing. There's Jalen. There's a hello kitty. Yeah. I wonder if she's drinking the sake juice boxes. Um uh, nineteen stealth coming down this way. You're carrying him. You're going over there. Alright, so when you head over there, the air in this chamber hangs heavy. As you approach, you have no choice but to recoil from the unspeakably horrific smell. Holding your nose does little to stop the assault as the caustic air brings tears to your eyes and tightens your throat. I'll put the patchouli oil under my nose. <laughs> you have found the orc privy. <coughs> Yes. The back wall of this chamber is splattered with an array of browns, greens, and yellows, still glistening from the damp air. Lying in a heap next to a sturdy wooden toilet is a badly stained cloak. <clears throat> Although there hasn't been an orc in this chamber in years, the stain of this chamber's original purpose is irredeemable. <laughs> Sounds like it could be a match. I'll check out the cloak. All right. So I assume you guys are here dealing with Navi. Cloak of wiping. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one for cleanliness. <laughs> and there's this big old orc privy here. And then this cloak that's thrown in a heap on the ground. Check out the cloak. You move over and check out the cloak. And... You lift it up, and while it's stained, it's been used, and it looks like there isn't a, a, a broken fiber on the entire thing. It's definitely a magical cloak <laughs> to have withstood years of abuse. Is it the cloak of wiping? It is the cloak of wiping. All right. Can I just shove it in my bag? Yeah, if you want. Do we know what it does? Can I... It is a cloak... Of where is it? It's called Cloak of the Filthy Rump. <laughs> it requires attunement. It gives you plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws, as well as advantage on saves versus disease. However, anyone who wears the cloak will carry with them the un unmistakable smell of an orc privy wherever they go. Oh, not good for dates. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. So, suddenly you guys hear Muck shriek. Can I 
answer it. <laughs> I'm gonna. You have been bitten by something. <laughs> bitten. By yeah. Cloak. Not only yeah. that, but you're stuck in place as well. You've taken uh, ten points of damage. Ten points, so I'm down. So ah! Not in the preview. Face ah! <laughs> first. <laughs> I think I'll yell this from now on. I'll go down clutching the cloak. There's no way. What do you what do you do, Bilge? I'm gonna go check what, what the noise was about. Alright, so Bilge goes in that room. Move Bilge in there. Maybe he ate spicy yesterday. That's that's uh, okay, that's Drang. Bilge is in the back here. Maybe he ate some spicy yesterday. Put you on top it. of the toilet. And you see the toilet is come alive. The toilet seat is like munching away on an unconscious <laughs> muck. It's a toilet mimic. <laughs> He's even told us about the toilet mimic before, and I had him. And then he mentioned the toilet and it didn't even bond on me. <laughs> Roll initiative. Nobby? Bilge? 19. Slurg? 10. Muck? 14. Drang? 15. So I'll try to get 13. <clears throat> Alright, Bilge, you see this thing, it's just like munching away on, on Muck. Muck's <laughs> clutching some dirty butt white cloak. Look, oh, the muck's unconscious. Where's your All right, you're going to go up the stairs, and then okay. up the stairs again, hang right, and it'll be your first door on your left. Up, up, right, left. Yeah. I'm going to take a swing up the thing. All right. So you approach it. Go ahead and push yourself up next to it. And the smell from the toilet mimic. The, the mimic seems to have adopted the smell of it as its own, and you need to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, fine. All right, so the smell is making you vomit, and you have the poisoned effect until your next turn. So you're at disadvantage for this Swing with the long sword. Come in here, fellas. The shitter's chomping on the goblin. <laughs> the shitter. Shitter's full. <laughs> a ten? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> My glamour armor. armor. So glamour Nobby Slurg is holding on to you right now, and you're like free. You're still freaking out. You're having the freak out. So what do you do? You want to try to escape his, his clutches, or are you just gonna like? Yeah. I'm gonna try to get away. All right. Make an athletics check. No. Oh. oh. So Nobby breaks free. And you can make a single move. I run over there. I see anything? You see slurred vomiting. <laughs> or I mean bilge vomiting. Um nice brain. Eh, Drang? Uh, is is Slurred conscious? Did you heal him? Yeah, he's okay. got four. Plus, uh, I gave him a healing potion. Wait. That we're not supposed to speak of. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to try and enter that room. So, uh, you're two spaces ahead of, of uh, Nobby right there. Yeah. Okay. So, so, Nobby broke free of your clutches and just started running. <laughs> oh, no. So, can I see the toilet from there? You can see the toilet mimic eating muck. Okay. Um, so nothing unusual. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. All right, I'm gonna. <laughs> I take shit all day. <laughs> Just another day. Uh, okay, as an action, or a, as a bonus action, I'll cast healing word on muck. Okay. Uh, for four health. You're at four, Muck. I'm a one. So, you probably, you're actually at four. There's no negatives, remember, at fifth, Ed. So you're just at four. And then, 
and I'll cast Sacred Flame. Um, thirteen. Ah, oh, dang. <gasps> it avoids your Sacred Flame. Oh, that moves out of the way. That's right. It is. Uh... Muck. I don't know if you want to be conscious because the horrific, horrific smell <laughs> coming from the inside of this thing. Goes I've been in places where. <laughs> oh God! All right, well it's your turn, Muck. Now one thing is, you are stuck, almost like super glue. It is. It, it's very. Its own body seems to have an adhesive sticking you to it. Do I have so you an can arm free. Or you can try to attack it, or you can try to escape from it. Try to escape from it. Okay. What do I need a dexterity throw? Um, save. Dex uh, well, save. It would be acrobatics. Uh, we'll call it acrobatics as you try to slip out of its nine. No, you struggle and you struggle and you can't do it. <coughs> and Ow. it's going to try to bite down on you. Oh, I also need you to make a constitution save from the smell. Uh, 13. All right, so you don't start vomiting. All right, so this round it's gonna, sh um, it's just gonna keep munching on you. I think it hits you. Only now that you're in its gullet, you take acid damage too. No. Ten points. Yeah, I'm, I'm back down. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so after the toilet, we got slurg. So I'm kind of uh, just going to, I don't think I can make it all the way up there, all right, to the toilet. Okay, I'm going to say it this way just so I can. I'm going to dash to the toilet. <laughs> all right. Oh, he's holding his buns as he runs. So it's 10, 20. Yeah, you can get right up there right next to. Right here. Right. One more up right, right there. Yeah. All right, bilge. All right, another con save? Yes. Nope. So, so you're still sick to your stomach. Another swing. Uh, 15. Oh, you hit. Between the pukes, you've steadied yourself. Seven. Seven damage. Nobby. If I move five in, will I be able to see it? Yeah, sure. Um, I think I can move five in the diagonal one. I won't move any closer. Scream. <laughs> Firebolt. Now, this is, this is like, reality is maybe a little worse than the, the trip in this case. There's a <laughs> toilet eating a goblin. <laughs> nom, nom. You hit. For three. Alright. Drang. Uh, can I squeeze up there in the melee range? No, you can't. No? Okay. You... Uh, I'll cast Sacred Flame then. Alright. Eight. Alright. Uh, two. Alright. So next, after Trang, is Muck. Make a death save. Uh, eight. That'll be a bad one. A failure. Damn it. Sorry, I can't even get close enough to spare the guy. All right, and it bites down on you, giving you another bad death save. So that puts you at two. And then it's going to try to punch someone else with a pseudopod. To try to punch Bilge. Uh, that's only a 14. Uh, however, now you have to roll on the disfigurement chart. Oh, disfigurement chart. Because you have two bad death saves. Chicks, dick scars. Chicks, dick scars, man. Let's see if you get one. 
It's a D20, right? It's percentile dice. Oh, man, that's even worse. There's quite, all, quite an assortment of options here. Not the nuts. <laughs> that is one option. 93. Oh, 93. I, I use bad usually. Yeah. What well, you want up there? This figurement chart is pretty random. Like, yeah. there's bad stuff all throughout. And there's some not so bad stuff. 93. Oh! 93. Damn it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I can pass it. All right. At least you did it's, get the it's, one below it. Yeah, the one, if you had rolled a 97, that would have been your groin. You've been oh, castrated. Okay. All right, so it's crushed your larynx. And now whenever whenever uh, Muck speaks, you have to use your best red fox voice. All right. Your best red fox impersonation. Someone needs to get in there and heal him pronto. Or you might want to take some of my bad Slurg! I had that for. Uh, okay, let's go take a uh, Actually, instead of trying to attack it, can I try to pull him out of its jaws? Uh, you could try. Uh, be an F. First, you'd have to hit it, hit him, so grab him. Okay, so that's 23. And then an athletics check to rip him out. Uh, Alright, so you rip the. the Goblin out, yeah, and horse chuck back him back behind back. you, I guess. I yeah. Know, All right, so put him up prone right behind you. So, <laughs> so Slur grabs Muck and rips him out of the toilet's mouth and throws him behind. All right. Bilge. All right. Can't say. You made it. You stopped vomiting. You don't have to roll again now. Wait on the toilet. No. Another one. The toilet might be the I'm end really of all of you. Dirty my whip up. <laughs> 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 Wait on the toilet. The only time I usually do that is when I Nobby. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, you hit for one point of damage. Um, uh, Drang, what are you gonna do? There's uh, like. Seriously chewed up goblin right in front yeah, of you. Yeah, I'm gonna spare the dying. Move up and spare the dying. Okay. Um, then f diagonal him up one. Oh, that's that's Nobby. Oh, that's Nobby. He's this guy, right? Okay. Uh, so that's my action. Or you can healing yeah, word him. Or you can cure wounds him. Or you can healing word and and. Well, I've got. Oh, I guess I do have two spells. Uh. I'll do cure wounds. All right. Uh, nine. You're at nine, Muck. Yes. All right. And you're not being chewed on by toilet. <laughs> That's right. right. And, there, and it's Muck's right. turn. <laughs> Shit, the holes. <laughs> Let's leave us alone. Lamont, you dummy. Let's leave us alone. Alright, uh, well, I'll get up. Can I cast an arrow between his legs? Like sure. Thing? Damn, toilet. I don't need to do that. 13? 13 hits. Uh, 8, uh, 11. Got it. Alright. Um, so now it's the monster's turn. All right, he's gonna try to hit. Um, he's gonna try to hit the bugbear again. Three, right. six. It's an eleven. Side this. Dang it. Okay. Now it's slurred. Bilge. Pretty well. You hit. Oh, 
They went to the Attack on Titan thing in Japan. I don't know if you guys know that show. A little bit. It's one of those yes. big, one of my daughter's favorites. Oh. I guess they're in Tokyo right now. No, Osaka's tomorrow. They're going to the tour of the colleges tomorrow. So my daughter's going to go to college in Japan. Obviously, I'm guessing she speaks Japanese. Or... Yeah, she taught herself. Like a couple of years, she's been teaching herself. She's always wanted to live there, so. That's got to be a tough language to teach yourself. We got her that Rosetta Stone thing. It works pretty well. Um, who just went? Slur? I did. Oh, Bilge went. Uh, Nobby. She'd rather play Total War? No. Sometimes she gets that. Drang. Uh, Alright. Sacred Flame. Uh, 14. Ah, I'm rolling pretty good on those saves tonight. Yeah. Unlike last Wednesday. <laughs> of course, your giants are pretty damn slow. Apparently, toilets are fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, so after Drang, it's Muck. Nine. You missed. All right, here we go. Do I want to bite? I think I'm going to try to bite someone. No, I got, I got a pseudopod first, don't I? I can't bite until I'm attached to you. All right, here we go. Uh, 17. Nope. What? 19. <laughs> I guess I built the character. I should know. <laughs> You're probably playing tug of war with your shield right now. Um, so... Slurg. Slurk smash. Uh, 15 or 17? Hit. Yeah. Ooh, another four. good one. Four. That's my second one in damage. I like that. Uh, bilge. All right, another swing. Stop trying to steal my shield. Oh, nine. And Nabi. Frightened, but he's shooting. Half you know, he's shooting wildly. That's what happens when you take from that. Uh, Drang. Uh, sacred flame. Nineteen. <laughs> oh! <laughs> He just opened his mouth wide and the flame went through it. Uh, right, Muck? Isn't there some gases down there? Shouldn't have torched this thing up? Well, right? well, Sacred Flame's not actually fire. It's radiance. Uh, 11? Missed. Crap. You guys should have killed this thing a long time ago. <laughs> what happens if we can hit it? I'm going at build still. All right. Oh, I did not get a 19, though. I got a 15. All right. Ugh. Dobby? Too bad you don't have a miniature for Eight, four, 12. 12? It hits. Uh, four, four, six, six. I had thought about it. My whole thing with, with mimics is the second you put a miniature out there, everyone knows something's up. So yeah. I just always draw mimics on the board. Yeah, unless you've got like a whole set dressing with bookcases and all the accoutrements. Yeah. Uh, and especially since there's no mimics that actually look like chests or whatever they are. They actually look like, you know, the attack version. Oh, Did yeah. you guys see the new mimic? It's a map mimic. It's like a flat mimic. And so, I think was it you that said, well, he could be the toilet paper mimic for the toilet mimic. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, travel in pairs now? It's in the, ah! it's in the Tome of Beasts. Beast. Okay, it came in yesterday, so I was cooking dinner. I was looking through it. it was When's the, uh, the Xanathar's thing come out? November? Yeah. So, November? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. that looks Which cool. one's that? Xanathar's, Xanathar's Guide, Guide to Everything. To everything. Oh. Of course, I have more. That, that's, I am that, that is the book I'm most frightened by. The uh, reason being is that, you know, every system of D&D, &D, with the exception of first edition, 
has broken the more options they've released to players. Because it creates combos that they don't always. They don't intend. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm a little nervous that what comes out is going to mess the, the nice balance we have out. But as a, as a group, you can always say, like, our 3.5 group on Sundays, there's a number of books that we just said we're not using because it breaks things. Yeah. And so you kind of have to, you know, do it that way. The problem is, is like me running something in Adventures League, you know, that's illegal, that, you know, is kind of cheese, you know, but whatever. Who just went? Me. Muck just went, so it's the monster. All right. Uh, oh. Did I? Was it him that just went? I just did fire damage to it. Yeah. Nobby? Oh, okay. So, Drang. Yeah, I was going to say, I like Drang. Uh, all right, Sacred Flame again. A two. Something right. happens. We're going to roll one. Five. Oh. All right. Uh, now it's Muck. Nope. <laughs> Damn it. Now I get to pseudopod. Come on, hit. Fifteen. Man, I'm to switch dice again. And... Slurred. Has Titan got the uh, cards in yet? Mm -hmm. so cards? I don't know if they've got the new ones in yet oh, or not. Eight. Uh, Whoa. Someone over at Eric's table had a box of them. But I don't yeah. know. Well, that was at my table. John Cena had a set. Yeah. yeah. He had a set too. But he got his at a show. He was all yeah. upset because the, the oh, fronts were right. cut fine, but the backs were mm -hmm. cut wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's got a unique set. Yeah. yeah, in 20 years from now, when they're when those are the unique, you know, selling for twice as much as the other ones are. Did you hit? I eight? did for eight. All right, bilge. All right, let's put them down to this. Oh yeah. yeah. One of the two dice is going to be a one. Oh, there you go. Max. 19 damage. Oh yes. All right, so you plunge your blade into the toilet. <laughs> Pinning the lid shut, and the whole thing just kind of like goes limp and squishy. <laughs> All right, when we're back to the camp and we're telling our stories to the bards, let's skip that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's speaking this. No, I would be curious how they would put that into songs. So the, so they battled the toilet mimic. Hey ho, hey oh. hi. Half an hour. <laughs> missing, missing the toilet mimic and puking all the while. As, uh, as everybody else leaves the room, I say, guys, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's ready to death. <laughs> All right. Who wants to take... Um, it's the Cloak of the Filthy Rump. Plus one to armor class, plus one to saving throws, advantage on saves versus disease, but forever carrying the stench of B.O. and diarrhea. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you answered right. that really fast. There you go. Knocks your armor class up. So what do you guys want to do? You're pretty badly beaten up. I say we take the rest. I, I think we'll all go that. up a level. We take the long rest. Where do you guys want to rest at? Not there. <laughs> yeah, not in the, not in the not stench in the hall. Um... Anybody have alarm? Any spellcasters? Either of you have alarm? No. I'm a uh, outlander hunter, so I could probably lay a hunter strap somewhere, but I don't think that's going to give us much protection from while we're sleeping. I mean, I don't have much uh, hit points anyway, so. And your death I mean, saves are cleared now that you've been healed. Although your throat's still crushed. Gotcha. If we're going to rest, do we maybe just want to go back towards the mushrooms? Yeah, it seems a pretty peaceful area of the cave. True. Yep. Alright, so you guys got me up by toys. <laughs> so who's going to take first watch as you try to rest here? Right, I'll take the first watch. Master, you guys are bedding down. Wasn't injured by the toilet. All right. Well, that toilet tried to get you. Although you did throw up quite a bit. He's dehydrated. You can just drink some water from the pool. 
All right. So make uh, roll a d4 for me. All right. Make a perception test as everyone sleeps. Seven. Seven. All right, so you are kind of busy wringing some water out of some water orbs and getting, taking a drink and trying to, in vain, see if you can get some of this smell off of you. It's not working out so well. Um, when you look at this tunnel and you see something waddling towards the group. It's a knowledge nature. So I don't know what that is. Oh, maybe it's this thing. Your heart drops. It is the bane of all warriors. The rust monster is approaching. Ooh, I'm gonna have to rouse the sleeping people. Asses up, swords out. <laughs> All right, we'll roll initiative then. Nobby. Eight. Bilge. Fifteen. Slurg. Nineteen. Muck. Eleven. <clears throat> Drang. Ten. Oh, that's not good. Ugh. I've got Mika snot on me. There's the rust monster. Five. So they're just kind of like, they smell metal and they're waddling towards you guys. Um, Should we try to run away, guys? We could. I don't know how strong these things are. All right. Uh, so, Slur, you you hear asses up and swords out. And so I'm on my feet with my great axe in my hand. And you can make a knowledge nature. Because you don't know what the hell that is, maybe. Nature is oh, so that's a eleven. Uh, yeah, you don't know what that is. It looks like a big beetle with a long tail or something. I'm gonna stay right where I am for now. And okay, then... it's not fluffy and it's not small. No, but <laughs> oh wait a minute, I have the uh, aggressive feet, yeah. so I can get to one and smack it around. Yeah, yeah let's do that. All right. You just rush up there. Ah! And go for seven. And you miss badly. All right. What do you expect? I just woke Bilge. up. Bilge. Of course, so far, you're the only one that's made that check. So you're the only one that knows what it is. Would I know of their properties? With that roll, yes. You got a good roll. Be wary of your gear that is not made of wood or leather. These things are depth for depth. I'm going to take a few steps and try and chuck a... I'll bring me a little bit closer. Chucking a hand axe at the one by the right. sword. Maybe. Okay. Muck. I'll stand up and chuck an arrow. Which one? Uh, he's engaged, right? Yep. Uh, that one there. All right. Fifteen. You hit. And six, nine damage. Okay. Drang. Uh, okay, I'll stand up. Knowledge, nature. Nine. I don't know what those are. Alright. Um, I'll move. So use 10 feet of your move to stand up. Okay, I'll move another 20 okay. feet forward. And then. Uh, Can I ask sacred plan? On which one? Uh, the one slurs. Seventeen. Okay. 
so you can frame has not been your friend today. No. Nobby. Mm, yep. Yep, yep, yep. There's the uh, mushroom. You know, it's still going. What is that? He says, yip, yip, yip. Nice Alright. Alright, monster's turn. Alright, so that first one on on uh, Slurg is going after your axe. It's little antenna to start waving. Alright, make a dexterity saving throw. Alright, so you jerk back your weapon and avoid its antennas. And it gets angry and tries to bite at you. And it bites you. For two points of damage. Woo. The other one comes up and engages Slurg. And he's also going after your axe. Big hunk of metal you've got there. Well, I gotta hit you first. Yeah. I got your axe, so make your deck save. What'd you get that first roll? It's first one was a natural. Thing. Okay, so you avoid it, and he tries to bite you in retaliation. For eight at that time. Ooh. And... Slurg, it's your turn. So, I'm pretty low, so I'm going to disengage and move out of range so that I can come back with my uh, javelins on my next... Timer I'm just gonna move over here. So you're gonna just disengage? Yeah. Okay. Bilge? Alright, I'm gonna grab my second hand axe. Okay. Oh. One, two, three. Use my other one arms. Swing up that one. Okay. Twenty one to it. Hit. Six damage. Hello? 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 Can you see this? Yeah, I can see it. It's a long way down. I'm really high up and it's here. Are you in Tokyo? Are you on that glass floor? They're on the glass floors. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> well, I, I'm... Can you see everyone here? Hello. Um, Hi. I think we lost her. Oh, no, it's back again. Hello? Oh. Are we having fun? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Can you see me now? I see outside the window. Uh, I try. I, for some reason, it isn't letting me switch the camera. Well, you just turn the can the thing around. <laughs> I can't see you. So. Oh. I'm uh, not much to look at, though. All right. Love you. Today is my daughter's birthday, too. So. And they're in Tokyo on our birthday. Today here or today there? Today there. Not here. Tomorrow it will be here. They are, if you, to find out their time, you add two hours and flip a.m. p.m. That's what time it is there. All right, who's up now? I just went, so we well, we'll have to. Muck. Oh, uh, Chuck some more arrows. All right, which one? The one on this side, so 16. Hit? Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, they're both fours. So, seven? Uh, yes. All right. Drang? Uh, I'm going to try my longbow. Ooh. Uh, seven. Uh, seven misses. Um, you got to say where you're at? You're up next, Dobby. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm going to stay there. All right, Nobby. Dexterity saves for both of them. For both. Yep. A 
19 on the die for the first, and a 12 on the second. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. Because they say. Oh. They're quite good at that. All right. Um, so the further Rust Monster goes at Slurg. You want to move him over there next to you? This one here? Yeah. And he's going after your axe. Uh, so make a dexterity save. Oh, you, you avoid it. And he bites you. The four. Oh, well, that's it. Are you unconscious? Yes, I am. Put, put Slurg down. And the other one's going to run it drain. Because you got metal armor on, right? Yeah, chain mail. Him? Nope. Yep. Oh, he missed you completely. Oh, that's good. All right. Slurg, make a death save. Key. All right. Bilge. Did anything happen to my hand axe? Nope. Or hand axe? Nope. Oh, He's got to hit you with its antennas, and that's what the effect is. I'll go, I'll go back to my longsword now. Okay. Is that on? Eleven misses. Surgeon. That hits. Alright. <clears throat> Jumps Bane in. is going to protect you. <laughs> <laughs> Bane will protect you. Alright. Um, so, Mock, you're up. There's both ones engaged now. Nasty, nasty critters. Uh, 14. Hit. All right. Which one are you shooting at? The one that's engaged. Okay. Yeah, this one is not good. Right. 10, 12. 12? Yes. Nice. Okay. And... Is he dead? Drang? No? Uh, You're splitting up your attacks a little bit. All right. I'm going to attack with my long sword. Okay. Close on. Uh, 19. You hit. Uh, three. Three damage. Um, I'm going to War Priest. War Priest. Uh, 19. You hit. Uh, five. It's a dead, dead. Dead. Rust monster. Uh, and then... I'll use some movement to get over towards this. All right, you can move up to 30. Uh, 30. Can I move right up to it? Yeah. Well, he's, he can't stop there because he made an attack. Huh? He has to stop there because he made an attack. He can't dash. Right. Yeah, but I didn't know if he wanted to stop right there next to it or back yeah, off. Yeah, I want to go to it. All right. Nobby. He knows that Bane will protect him. At least Bilge said so. And Bane will protect you too if you, if you start. All hail Bane. 14 points. It's dead. You killed it. I told right. you Bane would protect you. I'm going to cast Spare the Dying on Slurred right now. Alright. So, you guys want to continue trying to rest here, or do you want to move to a safer spot? Well, I guess we could back try to go back outside again. It's not, it's not that far away. Just ch 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 what, ten minutes or something. Not even that. Yeah. I, I think it would be safer because we don't know what could keep coming out of these tunnels. Right. right. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, I'm suspecting this one might be late. Are we going outside? Okay. Yeah. Let's let's all okay. march back out to the main. Your wounds on third. All right. Uh, cook some elf up, huh? All right. That gets me up enough to move out so they don't have to drag me. <laughs> All right. And you guys are definitely able to rest safely out there. Okay. Seems to be a nice safe spot. So XP wise, Is 
We'll just use the Adventure League rule for hit points, which is the, the half plus your Kanban bonus. What's the uh, time for the load? It's called D12 versus Kanban. Yeah. What's the hit die for a rope? Is it a D8? Is it a 5 plus con? I feel like I'm more rage too. I haven't been using that in a second. I'm used to playing fighter and not. So it's half of the rate. Half of plus. Um, you're a D8, so you get 5. Oh, okay. Plus your con bonus. So your proficiency bonus okay. doesn't go up. Yeah, that's that's 5 and there you go. Oh, primal pass. Yeah. I don't know what, uh, I don't know what else a rope is. At third level, yeah. I think you get to pick your path. Yep. Yep. Yeah, your path, and you have two d six sneak attack. Two d six attack. Sneak attack. All right. And what goes up with level three? Uh, for a cleric, uh, you got second level spells. Okay. What is and, it? Uh, your spell spells are for four first level and two second level. Okay. So you have to pick between. Uh, you have to pick between being a thief, an arcane assassin. trickster, or an assassin. I'll stick with a thief. All right. This is seems to be his calling. All right. So that means. Climbing no longer costs you extra movement. When you make a running jump, the distance you cover by a number of feet equal to your dexterity modifier. You get to increase your the distance. It's called second story work. And you have fast hands, which means you can do your sleight of hands and stuff in combat and using your cunning action. And of course, you get the extra. You get the extra uh, sneak attack bonus now. So this third level, again, I'm I'm, I'm introducing XP as we go to because I really wanted the group to start at second but get to third mid midway through. Um, uh, I I felt like the purpose of that was to. Um, you know, these are pre-generated characters, and a lot of times people don't really feel much about a pre-generated character. But if they're able to pick, say, the the path that Muck goes on, or or the primal path that the Barbarian goes on, or extra spells, or kind of make it their own a little bit more, they'll care a little bit more about the characters that they're playing. So that's kind of the idea. So it's nine nineteen. I like I can go as late as anyone wants to go. I don't know what time people have got to go. This probably be a good place to wrap, wouldn't it? We can keep going. I mean, it was Ivy probably about out of juice. You're out of juice. Yep. Yeah, that's that's fine. And we can continue Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we could pretty much finish Thursday pretty easily too. Right. You seem pretty tired, Byron. It's been we've been 15 trucks in two days. Ooh. Whoa. So thoughts as as we are wrapping the first day. Wouldn't be so hard if we could roll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you guys miss a lot. And there's really no monster you faced yet that has a I think the highest armor class of any monster here has been like a fourteen. That makes me feel And that was the so Rust Monsters. That makes me feel so great about myself right now. <laughs> Well, maybe you got it out of your system and you'll be all right tomorrow. Yeah, well, a little great tomorrow on Thursday. I'll come back and crack it. Maybe. 
You guys are going to need it tomorrow, that's for sure, for Strong King's Thunder. Yeah, I got a feeling we're going to have some issues. I'm just going to kill on my gun. So, any thoughts? Or you want to think, sleep on it from what you guys have seen so far? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, that, you guys like it? Yeah, yeah it's fun. Um, Some of my favorite encounters we haven't gotten to yet, though. The toilet. The toilet <laughs> mimic. Well, and we've even talked about the toilet mimic. The yeah, last time I used. I didn't expect it. Yeah. The last time I used the toilet mimic, I did it. The whole reason I created a toilet mimic was because I had a player that pooped in every hole that they found in a dungeon. So I'm like, all right. And so I put the toilet mimic together. He had actual toilet. He's like, oh great. And he drops trowel, sits down on the toilet, and it, you know, castrated him. And uh, he's like, you did that on purpose. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was that was Brandon's character. Remember. I think you were there for that. I wasn't there for that one. Oh. I was shy. Uh, I was shy. Was that the mechanical pencil? No, that was not the mechanical pencil. That was not the mechanical pencil. That was not the mechanical pencil incident. Mechanical, mechanical pencil incident was when his, his cohort was coup de grad by a drow. And he broke his mechanical pencil and like was real mad at me. I'm like, well, she's a drow. You know? Because she literally, she because the party was winning the fight, and so the cohort was on the ground unconscious, so she readied in action. She had the death 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 stroke or death attack feat, which allowed her to coup de gras as just a standard action instead of a full round action. So she was able to ready the coup de gras to interrupt anyone's action. And she's like, throw down your weapons or this person dies. So the first thing that they do is they shoot an arrow at her. <laughs> well... Um. That that leads to death. So the time the time he had to be escorted out was when he was bitten by a lycanthrope, turned into a werewolf, and then for like several weeks didn't do anything about it. And so he was transforming at night and killing like farmers and stuff. And when he when then one night Jim's character had died. So I'm like, all right, Jim. They they use divination magic. They figured out who the werewolf is, and it's Brandon. And he's like, "Oh crap!" You know. And I go, "And you're since you don't have a character, you're going to play the Baron's forces, and you're going to go arrest him." <laughs> and that was what he needed. He thought I was picking on him. <laughs> I was picking on him, but you know, whatever. You did that quite a bit. I pick on everybody. It's good form. Isn't that the job of the DM? Yeah. Keep it fun. That's what I say. Keep it fun. Keep it interesting. Uh, we don't need to erase anything, so we'll be picking up again on, on Thursday. So right. it's, uh, it's, uh, that was the, the booklet or module when it finally comes out. Is it going to have a, a picture of the character next to? Uh, well, next the art is done. Information? I mean, I saw the one, the cover piece. I don't know. I might... I might cut up the cover art and put pictures next to um, let's see. Some of the description of the character is missing. You know, eye skin, hair. That's on a normal character sheet. Oh, yeah. Well, I can put it on there. Here's the here's the cover art. I can pass that around. Oh, I've seen it. There you go. Oops. I think, I think all of us have seen yeah, it. Yeah, we can keep it here. You know? Oh, it doesn't matter. You can take them away as long as you come back Thursday. I don't care. <laughs> the bugbear's pissed. It's the tall guy next to him. He's really like he was crying too. Not even like it's the first like, edition bugbear too, with just the vest and the big furry crotch. <laughs> That's cool. I think that was. I guess the last time we didn't have. She did. Um, your wife did that, right? No, this is a friend of mine. I think um, the, the last time you didn't have shading on it, right? Right, right. She just sent me the sketch. Uh, another friend of mine did this. And my wife did the art for the first, the, the last mod we did for Wizards. Um, and uh, she, uh, um, her style is completely different. I really wanted, her style is much more, I don't know, really 
what the word is for it, um, stylized. Whereas I really wanted something humorous for the cover this time, so I hit up my friend Rachel to do it. She does a lot of like kind of comic bookish art, like that, and uh, it's kind of cool. I you know I didn't even realize it, but there's a lady named Bryn Bryn Metheny, and she did a lot of this art in here. And I didn't know it until after I'd known her for a little while, talking to her, because she showed me the picture of the owl bear. Um, she's like, "Yeah, that's mine. I did that." I wonder if they left her signature on it. Or that's hers. I don't see her signature anywhere on it though. But she does a lot of art for wizards. She's <laughs> pretty cool. I've always had a uh, soft spot for owl bears. Classic. Yeah, I had to. I, if I could have worked in a hook horror, I would have, but I don't think they're in fifth yet, head yet, are they? Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Are they? Yeah. Or maybe they were they're too high of CR. Purple or black and purple. Maybe they're too high of CR, I couldn't remember. I think the highest CR monster in this whole thing is three. Yeah, they're there. It's CR three. I could have used the hook horror, but I didn't. Maybe I should still work it in. This is just this is just the first this is the absolute first play test of this mod. So the last mod we did, we did uh five play tests, five different groups. And um but it was um a much longer mod and it was the Dates of Blight mod. No. That one we play tested the hell out of because it was <clears throat> like ninety percent of the experience comes from role playing. So like there's this big chart, you know, do this and you can have this reward. Do that, you can have this reward. And then a little side quest. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little town and there's all these different things going on. And basically it's like Days of Blight is like the Salem witch trial. Except there really is a witch. But you, the party not only has to figure out who's kidnapping these children and stop them, but they also have to stop the town from pulling itself apart. Because it's a, a religious community, deeply religious community that's that's uh, isolated itself in the in the countryside, and um, so a night hag has moved into the area, and for the second time, like it happened like thirty years earlier too. So there's these there's the ghost of the five children that were abducted the first time and killed, and so the party has to rescue the spirits of the first five or rescue their souls, if you will. Um, and rescue whatever children are taken this time, stop the night hag, stop the religious zealot from hanging witches and burning witches at the stake and whatnot in town, um, and doing it all while not harming um, any townsfolk, because, you know, they're just frightened. They're not evil. You know, they're just frightened. And frightened people do stupid things, you know. So. Do you want to see it, Mike? I have it. Oh, no, no, the, the Days of Light. I've, I've got it too. I haven't printed it the yet. The module he's talking about. I have it. Oh. You want to see it? Yeah, sure. I'll bring it to work tomorrow and uh, Jennifer can take and bring it to you. Sounds good. Yeah. I've, I haven't printed it yet. I think it'd make a great side quest on uh, in um, Strahd. That's what I've heard a lot of. I actually had somebody. <clears throat> Um, in Champagne bought it, and they ran it for their 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 group, and they said that that reminded them of Sleepy Hollow, which I hadn't really thought of before. But because um, all of the names, I, what I did was I started with the premise that I want to have it kind of like I want to have it like um, the mimic the Salem witch trials. So all of the names of all of the the NPCs in the town are all Puritan names, you know. Um, Jedediah and you know all these Puritan names, and uh, so that kind of sets the feel for it. And then the the Night Hag has a magical device that allows her to control the weather, so she, she has it raining nonstop. Now the town sits on a little islet, and she has it raining just downpouring nonstop. And so the the eventually the the rivers on either side of the town flood. And take out the bridges to the islet, so there's nowhere anyone can go. They're trapped on this islet, and um, then she, once every night, she lifts the rain and then brings in a dense fog, 
and then uses the cover of the fog to steal a child. And uh, yeah, she uh, she's um, and she's also and they, this device also allows her to night haunt. Like it allows her to to do extra things with her night haunt. She can like for example, she can sacrifice doing the damage from a night haunt to affect multiple targets who are all within certain proximity of one another. So she can night haunt multiple people, only she won't be able to do the damage in that case. She'll, they'll only lose the benefit of the night of sleep. Um, so there's there's um, interaction with the party where she, once she realizes the party's on her, she starts night haunting them and messing with them. Figure out the ideas. Yeah. Because the perfect thing is, is when I originally wrote the mod, I Wrote it back in third edition, and the night hag in third edition couldn't polymorph itself into other humanoids. Well, in fifth edition, they can turn themselves into like a little kid. They can turn themselves into a woman, any female humanoid, and so it's just a perfect segue for that adventure. Was to because now she can walk amongst them. And that was the other kind of like the adding to the paranoia was that the hag could be anyone, just amongst them, you know. And, um, the, uh, and of course that's what kind of pushes, that pushes the, the townsfolk to be like, start accusing anyone and everyone of, 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 uh, of witchcraft, they call it. And, um, because this has happened before, there was a, there was an event that happened before where the fifth child that was taken in the first round of abductions escaped from the hag and she had to complete her ritual she needed five so she had to quickly steal a different one well when that fifth child that escaped turned up the parents of uh the child that was taken as a substitute started accusing that other family of being in league with the witch and this goes on for years <laughs> and um so now that it's happening again they're they're likely targets for the for the witch or for the accusation of witchcraft and it's one of the mods where um you just won't save everybody there's no way to save everyone somebody's gonna die um the question is is can you do the most good you know it's definitely a mod that's built for heroes like i didn't write the mod for a bunch of people who feel like playing chaotic neutral characters to go in there and and muck around, you know. Yeah, the or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely We're wait the rain out. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely meant for heroes to go in there and and every I wrote up like every single house in the town has an NPC with a background, a personality. Um, every single child who's targeted by the hag, there's a reason why the hag picked that kid, um, and. Figure, all figure it all out yeah huh. um so it's 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 it was a lot of fun to run i'm working on the sequel now um which i've already play tested once and um it it's this one the first one is heavy heavy role play so like if you have a group like aaron's back room group probably wouldn't like it very much because they just want to kick indoors and chop people up you know, but if you really have a group that really gets into the role playing, then it's uh, it's right up their alley. The second one it still has a lot of role playing, but I would say it's more along the lines of a balanced 50 50 role playing combat. Yeah, I, I run to group of doing like, okay, we get to a place, there's a door, it's open. All right, we close it and then we kick the other one. <laughs> and then we go in the room. It was always like that. I'm much more. I really enjoy getting into the characters and. Uh, yeah, I mean, when we were running Strahd in the back room, I mean, it's really a great campaign, but you gotta get into it to really experience it. Like nobody was taking it seriously. Yeah, that was one of the things when I started Strahd. None of you guys ran Strahd with me, right? No. When I sat down for Strahd, I told everyone, "Listen, I won't run this if all you want to do is smash." This is like a real, it's a horror setting. That's what I'm interested in running. And they all agreed, okay, we're going to, we're going to approach it that way. And it, it went really well. Even, even that Strosher guy, who's like, he still doesn't even know what, which one's a D8. You know, he's been playing for over a year, you know, even he got into it and he was role playing really well. And, 
And that was kind of the agreement that we went into that mod. That kind of mod of 50% of it is getting in the moon. Exactly. I mean, and I'm, you know, I'm someone scared. You're kind of missing on a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like the horror genre. That's my favorite genre is horror. And, uh, um, and I think mood is real important. Like when we play tested days of blight, the last time, the last play test group, um, we actually stayed up. We did it overnight. We stayed up to like 6am to do it all in one night. And, uh, I, what I did was on the computer I had, because they knew anytime the rain would stop, but the, the, the fog would come in and that was a sign that something bad was about to happen. The fog coming. in. So rather than me saying, Oh, you guys noticed this rain has stopped. I had a, I had a, uh, a looping storm on my computer running and I would just stop it and see if anyone noticed. Cause I would have it kind of loud, you know? And um, every time it, every time I would hit pause on the loop, everyone kind of something's gonna happen. Yeah, something bad's about to happen. Um, oh shit! DM is drawing a map now. Yes, <laughs> yes. It was, but it was a lot of fun. When he goes to his right and starts digging through the boxes. That's one fire giant. Huh? That's two are... fire giants. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah that's when we were playing Strahd, no, you were about to go through there, but you never, uh, never really meet her until the very end. But. She got, I mean, we were kind of overhyping her, but up to a point where I guess we were just making fun of her name because it's not a very appealing name. Mm -hmm. And she almost became like this bigger than life monster that was stalking <laughs> us. And whenever we'd open the door or check under a bed, open the chest, we're like, what's well, going to be Gertrude on there or something? <laughs> you hear her nose, it's going to be Gertrude that she's stalking us or something. <laughs> she almost became like this kind of like, Loch Ness monster, like creature, <laughs> open the doors, get through the... I try, that's what I tried. I tried to, like, the mod said to have Strahd show up a lot, and I had him show up a lot, but I didn't, like, I know that another table had him show up and just fireball the shit out of people and stuff. I liked, I liked him to show up and, like, just go in, like, the party knew that they couldn't take him at that point. Up to a certain level, there was just no prayer. So I knew that that's something you use, you know, like... So Eric was at the table, uh, Eric Roth, mm -hmm. and he learned his lesson really quick because he started mouthing off to Strahd. So Strahd <laughs> dominated him and had him pound his own head into the table until he fell unconscious. So he's like, bang, 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 you know, and just and he was unconscious. And to me, stuff like that is much more interesting from a role playing standpoint than him riding in on his nightmare, dropping fireballs as he goes. Well, because yeah, he, you know, any D and D villain can do that. Yeah, I mean it's. The interaction with him, getting to know his personality, is what's the most fun. You it know, shows that you're just messing with you. He could end it whenever he wants. Exactly. And, and with he is part. such a classic vampire too. Yeah, yeah. And I had, uh, you know, when the the party got, went to, um, oh, so I knew that the party, if when they went to the, um, what is that, the uh, Emerald Temple or whatever it was called in the south, Amber Temple. Yeah, Amber yeah. Temple. Um, that there, if you did everything right, you technically could become a full blown vampire, you know, in, in the Amber temple, if you did all the right things and, and hit up the right thing, there is actually a way to become a vampire. If you followed the same steps Strahd did to become a vampire. And so I was like, you know, it'd be so cool if one of the party members went for it. So when we did the tarot reading, I introduced an extra card. It's like the first cards were all randomized but i had uh i had a death card set off to the side but i kind of slipped it in and dealt it from the bottom of the deck kind of thing and i said i threw it down and they were like well, what's that card for and i go and the um madam whatever her name was eva or whoever it was she was like there's one amongst you that does not seek to destroy strahd but rather to supplant him and take over and and, you know, and there's there's a betrayer amongst you. And so that was like one of the first nights they learned that there was a betrayer amongst them. And I played up the idea that, yeah, I'm working with someone behind the scenes. And what I was hoping for was that someone would just choose to do it. <laughs> and I had two party members choose to go for it. And when they were in the Amber Temple, it came to blows. Because they get to the part... Where they they get to the sarcophagus where they if they make up they have to kill someone that that's oh it was so perfect 
because they had to kill somebody who they either loved or revered. Well, the cleric of the party had bailed them out. Like he, remember Lord Fabius? Yeah. Lord, I mean, he, they still call him Lord Fabius, our Lord and Savior. He played that character to perfection. He bailed that party out over and over again. Every night, they're like, oh, Fabius, you're so good. Yeah. And, and, I mean, it was, like, perfect because here's someone that for months we've been playing this mod, and they actually have been revering him. So this is perfect. And when it came time to, like, they realized, oh, because they, they're at the sarcophagus, they're reading the ritual, we have to kill someone we revere. And two party members immediately turned on him. <laughs> and um, meanwhile, okay, so they turned on Fabius. The party grapples Eric's character, who, of course, was trying to go for it. And it was my daughter was the other one. But she, the great thing was is that she was under the, there's a wand of frost that's cursed in the Amber Temple. And it was, the curse was that you will do anything for power. That you want to amass power for yourself. So, like, she's thinking to herself, well... That's, I, I want to replace Strahd, you know, that's the curse. So she hits, um, she hits Fabius with a cone of cold and knocks him unconscious. Meanwhile, they're wrestling Eric's character, who they thought was the bigger, bigger threat. And she goes over and cuts his throat. And to complete the ritual, she just had to drink the blood and go over to the altar and do this little hooky, you know, hootie dooty. Um, but one other party member lucked out, critted her, and knocked her out. So she wasn't able to. And then they cast the remove curse and got rid of the wand. But Fabius died, and um, luckily they had a raised dead scroll, so they were able to bring him back. That's pretty cool. Um, no wonder he doesn't kill anybody anymore. Why would? <laughs> that's what. They, that's how you're going to be treated. <laughs> It's it was that was my favorite mod that they put out was Curse of Strahd, by far. Like I've run, I've run now, um, I run Horde of the Dragon Queen and Rise of Tiamat. Um, I ran half of Elemental Evil because everyone wanted to just stop and start playing Strahd. Elemental Evil was okay. It was just a big sandbox, so it took a ton of prep because they could go anywhere at any time and. And it, the one with like tons of death, basically it's a huge death dungeon crawl. Yeah, because there's all the, well, it's there are multiple dungeons. Every every faction of the element Temple of Elemental Evil had their own dungeon, you know. And it was like one of those mods that, like, at first level you could walk into like a, a you know a CR twelve area. I mean, it was just like I think when they were third level, they raided this one fort. Um. Barely lived, but they found a tunnel down in the dungeon. And the first encounter was with a dragon turtle. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are third level, you know? So yeah, Even if you make your save against the breath, you're dead. Anyway. Yeah, he I knew. Mean, so I just kept telling him, you know what, guys? I'm going to stop you here. You guys leave. <laughs> you know, because I don't want to ruin. We've been playing this for months, and now you're just going to walk into a dragon turtle's mouth, you know? Um... And that was the other problem I, that was, well, that one, and then Horde of the Dragon Queen, at first level, you encounter an adult blue dragon. And you're supposed to run away. You know, you're supposed, you're in a castle, the castle's under siege, the adult blue dragon swoops in, um, and you basically have a round or two to find cover. Well, what happens if they don't? You know, they're dead. And that's literally what happened. Like Eric's table. Let's fight the white dragon. Yes. Split the party and fight the white dragon. <laughs> I've been uh, thinking of this idea that I've heard recently from my monthly game. As a one off, give all the players empty character sheets, create characters, and then they have to discover who they are and what their attributes are as you go. Because the guy, you know, does a uh, strength check and you say, he gets a seven, say, okay, that's a nine. So you so can figure out his strength is plus two and then do. He walks up, you know, uh, have you seen any, you know, they're looking for a dwarf or something. Have you seen any dwarfs here? You mean other than you? So now he knows he's a dwarf. Doesn't even know what class he is. I mean, just plain blank character sheets. They have to fill in as you go. So like they have, like, amnesia or something? Yeah. I, uh... By doing stuff. By, yeah, so 
Just, I figure that would be pretty heavy role play to find out who you are. I have a few ideas for a sequel to this one. One of them was like, one of them, one of my ideas I started brainstorming on was, uh, it was kind of like a search for Spock, but it's a search for Nobby. He want <laughs> because at the end of this mod, and you guys see, there's like a little thing. You guys see the movie Animal House mm-hmm. at the very end. It goes through each character and says what what they did in the future. You know, well that's this mod has that at the end. You know, so and so, you know, does this or that. Nobby because senator from California. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but obviously with his his complete lack of a long term memory, he just where'd he go? I don't know. Who are these guys, Nobby thinks, and just wanders off, you know, so it's the search for Nobby. But at the same time, I, I, I want I need to work them in early enough and work in an adventure hook that ties all five together again. Um, but I, I'm struggling with that a little bit because it has to be goofy and quirky, but I don't know yet. Yeah, it can't get much stranger than a freaking toilet bowl. <laughs> oh, it can. It's coming up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> Beware the toilet mimic. Oh, it's not touch anything from there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you guys helping out. It's all, I'm definitely give you all credit in the mod. So unless you don't want credit and you don't want your name published, but I always try to make sure that everyone's okay with that. There were actually people that that did Days of Blight. They're like, I don't know if I want my name in there. Okay, you don't have to. It's good. Oh. I got my I got some new miniatures today though. Oh, good. Yeah. Little kids. Little kids. Yeah, from the new Paizo set. I have little kids I was using in Days of Light for the encounter with the hag and stuff, and she kidnapped a bunch of them, but uh, they're not painted. And uh, these are all pre-painted, so I was like, heck yeah. Get some little kids out there. Oh. All right. So we'll be back here Thursday. Yeah. Yep. Same time. See you. Yep. Five thirty.